All right, there we go. Now we're now we're live. So now, Sandy, if you will, uh, if you could start reading numbers sixteen, that would be great. Now, Cora, uh, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, son of Levi, Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eli Eliab, and On son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said to them, ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then, lift up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. And he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy. And will cause him to come near unto him, even him whom he has chosen, will he cause to come near unto him. This do. Take your censers, Korah and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray you, ye sons of Levi, seemeth but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel hath separated you from the congregation of Israel? to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And he hath brought thee near to him and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood also? For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord? And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, we will not come up. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of a land that flows with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us? Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. And Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow, and take every man his censer and put incense in them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, 250 censers, thou also, and Aaron, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and will thou be wroth with all the congregation? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose up, and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their sins. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan and Abiram, on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out, and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives, and their sons, and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye know, hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath 
sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. And the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertained in Decorah and to all their goods. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit and the earth closed upon them and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning and scatter thou the fire yonder, for they are hallowed. The censers of these sinners against their own souls. Let them make broad plates for a covering of the altar, for they offer them before the Lord. Therefore they are hallowed, and they shall be a sign unto the children of Israel. And Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers wherewith they that were burnt had offered, and they were made broad plates for a covering of the altar to be a memorial unto the children of Israel that no stranger, which is not of the seed of Aaron, come near to offer incense before the Lord, that he be not as Korah and as his company, as the Lord said to him by the hand of Moses. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, you have killed the people of the Lord. And it came to pass, when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron, that they took toward the tabernacle of the congregation, and behold, the cloud covered it and the glory of the Lord appeared and Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation and the Lord spake unto Moses saying get you up from among this congregation that I may consume them as in a moment and they fell upon their faces and Moses said to Aaron take a censer and put fire therein from off the altar and put on an incense and go quickly into the congregation and make an atonement for them for there is wrath gone out from the Lord, the plague is begun. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living. And the plague was stayed. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700 beside them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. Nice reading. That was a lot. But did you... Uh, what do you think about that? Any comments from anybody before we go to the next part? What did they do exactly? They rebelled against Moses and Aaron and Korah and those rebelling with him. They wanted to take the position that Moses and Aaron had for themselves. So you could say. Yeah, they wanted, yeah, they wanted to go around uh, God's ordained priesthood and all that kind of stuff. Correct. They thought that they could do a better job than Moses and Aaron. They thought, oh, why do you do, why do you appoint uh, Aaron? Is because he's your brother. Like, you only picked him because he's your bro. That, that kind of stuff is what they were doing. They were stirring up the whole people against Moses and Aaron, and Moses and Aaron were the two that the Lord had appointed. So to go against them is to go against the Lord, which means you're, you're in trouble, right? <laughs> Another good idea. How long is this before the, uh, the promised land? This was during. This was the forty-year, uh, you know, sentence had just started in the narrative in chapter twelve, thir like thirteen, 
is when you see like 12, 13, 14, all that kind of stuff. Okay. I'm good. Any other questions? Or comments? Or anything? Because if no, not, then I, 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 I would have to reread it in a in a language I can understand. No, I mean it, it was a lot to take in, but I mean, like, hopefully you'll retain enough of what was said. Uh, hopefully you were into the story. <laughs> yeah, but now the reason. <clears throat> well, well, I yeah, I I was on par with what she was saying because we're both reading sixteen eleven King James. <laughs> right. But uh. But now, if there's no questions further on Numbers 16, but you keep in mind the things that were said in Numbers 16, especially what happened with Korah, that's the key, the whole yeah. Korah thing. If, uh, Sandy, you could read one more little bit. It's very short. It's, it's the whole book of Jude. So if you could read all of Jude, that'd be great. By the way, it's the book right before Revelation. It's oh, the book right before. Say, I... It's right before Revelation. It's one page, so like don't, I don't worry. Think I have right. Jude in my Bible. Let's see. It, okay. it is. It's right before. Go to Revelation and then go one page before. That's Jude. It's one page, <laughs> <laughs> literally. But while you're reading this, I want you to remember what we just read and think about it and see. I, I want to see if you find anything without me even saying anything even though I kind of just did. Okay. Um, the general epistle of Jude. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in and awares who were before of old ordained to this co condemnation. Ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Want me to read that one again, Albert? <laughs> no, just keep reading. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignity. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, 
and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Boom. Good job. Boom. Now, I hope all the audience can capture all the awesome sauce that happened there. So you have Jude talking about the same thing. See, you, you paused there for a second and you asked me, why did you do that? You said, therefore, I will put you in remembrance though you once knew this. That whole part. No, she was saying, and the six, angels who did not stay with their own position. Or yeah, see? So now, you're saying that's core is a rebellion. Because look what they did, see? Do you see why I'm saying it now? I had her read it. So now you know the whole story of Korah's rebellion and what happened. So yeah. So the angels which kept not their first estate, they left their own habitation. He hath Who reserved. Are the angels? Who are the angels? Korah. They Who? were the they were already. Oh, you're the saying Levites. the angels are Korah. No, no, it's so the Levites, you know that Aaron is the, the high priest, obviously. Yes. Because, but then all the rest of the Levites, they're, they're also priests, but he's the high priest. So uh -huh. Korah was also one of these priests. He was one of the elders of the Levites. So he was well up there. He already had the highest job that he could possibly have, the highest honor, aside from not being Moses or Aaron. But no, he and the others with him that he convinced, they wanted to usurp Moses. And they wanted to take the power for themselves. You this know what is, I noticed? This is or what happened. Crossed my mind. So you're saying... You're saying number six, and the angels mm -hmm. who did not stay with it. You're saying that is Cora. And... Yes, that's what that's what it was. Yeah. They were the angels. So who is they were the in, ministers in cause... number seven? But in number seven, mm -hmm. it talks about Sodom and Gomorrah. Sure. Yeah, because again, in Sodom and Gomorrah. So what? So what? what so in Sodom and Gomorrah, they were doing things that they weren't. Well, you're saying this is all in reference to Cora, but it's not actually all in reference. To no, 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 no. On, only the one part. Which part? Not the whole thing. They're, they're, he's giving multiple examples in Jude. He's saying here, here. I know he is. But he says they perished in the gain, the gainsaying of Kor. That's not Kor. It's Korah. The gainsaying of Korah. Because he was like, hey, guys, we could take the position of Moses for ourselves. But they all perished because they all got <laughs> swallowed up into the earth. And that, if I mean, I must say, like, if you got swallowed but it's up got, into the earth, I think, it, I, that I would think be change the darkness. Easy. I mean. But it's <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't agree with it, but um, because it's got like it uses Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And then it uses when when he was scrapping with uh, the archangel Michael about the that, and then he talks about Korah. This later, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he uses quite a few different examples here. So I'm not sure exactly how. You well, he uses it. a couple examples, but like, all right. So one of the things I think, like, if Ken were here, he might say, like. Uh, there's an order to these things, or some people might say that there's an order, but I don't, there's not an order, uh, especially if it is the, the angel version. But um, so he says in Jude, he says, he saved those out of Egypt. He later destroyed them. And that's exactly, remember, they were all well, complaining. Poor, like, yeah. oh, well, well, the birds. So he's destroying them all for various reasons because they were unbelievable. But they all died, like, oh. right? I mean, they no, all died. They we know that's in reference to, like, they, every, all of them they died. Didn't all, die. all the unbelievers did. All the complainers all did. All the unbelievers died, but all of the Israelites <laughs> didn't die. That's what I was saying. Sorry. But, I mean, we know that's just a foreshadowing that you're that if you're not saved, you're not getting into the kingdom. 
into the right. promise. Right. So, so right. 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 But in Jude, it says, so it says first, it says, I want to put you in remembrance that you once which, knew which, this, but which he, when you at? he said, oh, this is Jude 1 5, I believe. Okay. But he says, like, I want to put you in remembrance, though you once knew this. Uh, but like, even after saving them, I'm not like, I don't have it in front of me, but even after save, oh, actually I do have it in front of me. Look at that. <laughs> there, I will therefore put you in remembrance though you once knew this, how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed them that believed not and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He hath reserved an everlasting change. He destroyed change them as well. Unto see, the I judgment see, I, of the great day. I see. I see it's that all, as a totally different reference. It's all it's all together now. It's all the same verse. And then it's saying likewise. It's not though. It's it's no, not because no, no, it says mind. and and then I'm, it talks about Sodom and Gomorrah. No, so, no, you're right. So but yeah, and you don't start a sentence with and I mean it'd be like and you know, I, I tomorrow get it. we're going to Disneyland. No, but he was saying to, <laughs> like to me, what he's saying is um I'll put this in remembrance, it destroyed uh the people from egypt and the angels they also destroyed them and then just as sodom and gomorrah and then it goes on and on and on about the archangel but, right so right okay i see what, okay so you're saying so first he saves them out of egypt because this is what ken was saying in a way he was saying like oh there's a timeline i'm like no there's no time you're you're breaking I don't think the, it's a timeline there is a timeline then there's there's a break here but no, I don't think there's a timeline either. But you, so the Egypt first. So he destroys the people that he saves out of Egypt first. Then he's right. going to bring up, for some reason, the angels who are rebellious and they did the right, thing in Genesis six, right? Chains. And right. then, and then even Sodom and Gomorrah, which yeah, does that have anything to do with Genesis six? Yes or no? We'll find out later. Maybe well, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. He's just uh, he's just saying. That, those are the just those as are Sodom the three, and Gomorrah. Right, those What's are that? the three examples that are given here. But then, of course, you have the other one, which is the what, uh, two Peter two four through seven or well, whatever. Well, you also have no, no, because you so you have three examples. Actually, you have okay. another one here because you're talking about the body of Moses, right? Oh well, yeah. See, that's another thing I wanted to bring up too. Good point. And then you've got, and then and then it says in number eleven, woe to them, for they walked in the way of Cain and abandoned themselves for the sake of gain. Balaam's there and perished in Korah's rebellion. Right. 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 Yeah. <clears throat> you know what? Jude is really tough too. I Jude. love Jude. Jude is like so I do so too, fun. but but it's it's tough. Like, I mean, I see it completely different than you, right? Of course you do. <laughs> you know that's what I mean? the fun part, right? If we all solved the same thing right off the bat, that would be boring, wouldn't it? Then we'd be well, robots. Not really. It would be actually kind of kind of refreshing <laughs> you're like i want everybody <laughs> albert you must be a drone you need to be a drone i'm the queen bee y'all are drones I'm just, I'm just... <laughs> so that's just how i see it but i thought it was interesting that all of a sudden they were called angels like oh okay like but it doesn't really it? say they're called angels right it just says because he's to me it's an example if you if you read it, I want to remind you all you you all you all knew this stuff. I say the uh, the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed them. Yeah, but it and says the angels it says who did not hold their authority all destroyed yeah. them. Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed Sandy, them. Do you have a note next to that verse in in six? Do you have do you have a note in one six? I don't have one. Because mine says, and and the angels which kept not there, and then there's like a double bar. It says first estate, but it says or principality. Mine, mine yeah, has see, a name. Mine says. Uh, see, that would back up Alan's theory. <laughs> you know, I listened to the principalities, right? You know what I did the other day? I listened. I listened to our conversation from a year ago with Alan, like when and, and Sandy was oh, there. I was like, holy crap, Sandy was there too. <laughs> I was like, Dang. she must have been just brand new. Yeah, she was, and then she was totally like, oh man. And Alan was there, <laughs> but yeah, that was like, like four hours conversation. Crazy. 
That's crazy. Look at my mine says um for first estate at the end of the verse it says original place with God. Yeah. First estate. Well that's interesting. Original and that's place exactly what Cora did. I wonder what the Holman Bible says. Which is interesting because that's exactly Cora. You know, Paul he talks about not not falling back from you know the faith that you've you've gone like not to fall back like once you've come to that place, it's worse off for those once sure. having sure, come but also to faith Cora to like, then return to. Mm -hmm. Cora didn't keep his first position. He had the highest position that he could possibly have without being Moses or Aaron. Like he was already like of the highest class. He was a Levite. He was already of the priests. He was a messenger. He was an angel. You see? And he wanted Moses' position. He wanted he, he so thought they were locked in chains. Him. And this is what the whole thing is about. And they're they are so reserved they're for locked the judgment in chains. Day. Because they all got sucked up into the earth into a giant hole. So they are Okay, reserved. so they're locked in chains. Does that make sense to Under you? darkness. It says, it says uh, in Heck prison. Cora and his people are locked in chains. In yes. prison. I, I don't, yes, I don't exactly. Know. They're locked until the judgment so. day, which already happened because we're full preterists. They're locked so. in chains. <laughs> yes. The, 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 it's metaphorical not chains. Well, that, they're not, is not in chains. No, oh, they're right. not. They're not literal chains. Like, oh. on, they're, they're not literal chains. It, it's a metaphor. That's it's so saying like they're stuck there. They can't leave. They're they're screwed. They there's okay, no so way for them one. to escape from this judgment. They're they're locked under chains until the judgment day. Again, if you're talking about angels, there's verses I could show you that say the angels can't. They can't die. It says, oh, well, we will be like the angels and no longer able to die. Well, you can't, we can't have it both well, ways. Yeah, but that's only if you're saved, Albert. Uh, no, I have the verses. That's all. I'm, I'm not trying to just say. <laughs> like, that's only if you save it, that you'll never die. Right? No, it's in the verse. But Which verse? Oh, I don't know. Off the top of my head, I'd have to. But that's I'd in reference to, to us. My Bible hub. Right? Because we're, we have eternal life. Don't you agree? Well, yeah. If we're, if we're a believer, yeah, then we should have right. eternal life. Yeah, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because it doesn't talk about, about them having uh, sexual issues, like, uh, do, does it? No, it does No, that's what I'm saying. It but that's what it's anywhere. in reference to. It's, it's saying that you know like if, if you, we will be like the angels and we are no longer able oh to, yeah i know that yeah that's why that's the what there's, there's, what's that i thought she said they weren't referring to sex sexy time but it, lasciviousness what is uh second peter 2 4 say yeah that's the one where it includes lot but it also talks about other yeah go ahead to uh it's just a couple like just go a little bit before uh your your jude and uh says, couple um, pages and you'll find two peter two two peter two and you want to start well why don't you just read all of chapter two because why not hang on just wait i want to read you guys the holman bible to see how, how it sounds uh, oh you, you know i want to what two peter wait for which verse i'm gonna read just a little bit of Jude. Okay. Oh, Jude. okay sure, why not? Go for it. Now I want to remind you, though, you know all of these things. So this is about the apostates past and present. The Lord first saved a people out of Egypt and later destroyed those who did not believe. And he has kept with eternal chains and darkness for the judgment of the great day, the angels who did not keep their own position but deserted the proper dwelling. In the same way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them committed sex sexual immorality and practiced perversions just as the angels did and serve as an example by undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. Nevertheless, these dreamers likewise defile their flesh, reject authority and blaspheme glorious ones. Yet Michael, the archangel, when he was disputing with the devil in a debate about Moses' body, did not dare bring an abuse of con condemnation against him, but said, the Lord rebuke you. But these people blaspheme anything they don't understand. 
what they know by instinct, like unreasoning animals, they destroy themselves with these things. Woe to them, for they have traveled in the way of Cain. So, and then it just goes on to talk about their doom, right? You got to keep going. You got to finish it in the way of Cain. And then, come on, you're, you're going to leave out the Korah okay, part. You, okay, hang on. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, for profit. Woe to them, for they have traveled in the way of Cain, have abandoned themselves to the heir of Balaam for profit, and have perished in Korah's rebellion. These are the ones who are like dangerous reefs at your love feast. They feast with you. They are waterless clouds, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, enough. and then it says, <laughs> wild waves of the sea foaming up their shameful deeds, wandering stars for whom the blackness of darkness is reserved forever. Yeah, exactly. That's what that's what's reserved for Korah. All these people that did these things that are in the examples. But there was it's interesting there was, that there was Cain sent off. There, he was called uh, wasn't Cain called a wanderer too? Yeah, he was a vagabond and a wanderer. Like right? They wander in the earth, and, they, and they're called wandering stars or planets. But yeah, wandering stars. The only time you'll see planet in the Bible is the wandering stars. Just so, just so I can throw in a little stuff here. So. Albert, I mean, I've heard you say this before, so just to clarify on my end. So you're mm -hmm. saying, so when you look at verse 5, obviously where it says, you know, that Jesus who saved the people out of the land of Egypt after destroyed those who not, did not believe. Correct. So you're obviously throwing that as the exodus, right? Calling yep, the people this out is of when they're Egypt. leaving Egypt. Yeah, there were so many yeah. people that got destroyed because six. they were like, "Oh, like we need this, we need that, or this, the what." The, there's so many people that got destroyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then verse six says, "And then the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority." So you're saying that's the core of part. No, I'm saying I'm saying that five and six go together in tandem as one verse. I got you. So yeah. so I read it as, "I will therefore put you in remembrance." So you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them which believed not, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. See, because yeah. these are the angels here are the Levites. They're the they're the ones that were entrusted with the message, right? They were supposed to the prophet, let let Aaron be your prophet, right? So messenger, prophet, Aaron, Levite, to well, me. Was the priest, was a prophet, but... priest angel, whatever. That. It's all the same difference. Kind of, but no, I, I, I see what you're, what you're saying. I just think it, it is weird how he kind of like, let's just say for argument's sake, he's talking about, you know, either, because there's two options that you can, pick for verse six i mean well if you throw yours in then that's third you know but most christians or you know everybody else would kind of say well these are the angels either either it's the angels of genesis chapter six or it's i guess the angels that the devil took the one third of the angels but i'm just saying but dude like does it make sense to you like if we're reading like if we're just reading jude here like so we're just mm -hmm. gonna chill we're gonna read the letter of jude you get all the way to uh um, you know verse five and you know all right let's start in verse four it says oh for, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our god into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And now you're going to tell me that he's going to go into a completely different story out of nowhere, like left field. And he's going to be like, oh, by the way, also remember the angels. That's what you're saying. It's like, no, this is the same sentence. He's saying, and believe not. And. I wanted to. And. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. All I'm suggesting I mean, is there shouldn't be a, a break between five and six. It's all one. So it should be I'm one. Verse. I just want to suggest this about angels because reading the numbers and then reading over there how 
I could clearly see that that was referring to them being, you know, the earth opening up, but now they're being called angels. So, so what occurred to me was, well, when you're not in this flesh body anymore, they're calling them angels. But also I like what you said, angels being messengers, priests, the ones that distribute the message, which is different than a prophet because wasn't Moses the prophet? And yet Moses said to God, no, he didn't no. want to speak. He, he was not good with his speech. So he, he let his Aaron, his brother, right? right. Exactly. Yeah. And so Aaron exactly. became the priest or the one who would speak. So Moses, in a sense of a prophet is the one who hears from God and, or, or, uh, sees the message or, or like a visionary. Uh, if that doesn't sound too new agey, but the prophet is the one that's kind of given the message and then the priest would, or the high priest is, you know, delivers the message and then, right. Cause I just think that's interesting because there are different offices, but I'm not sure exactly how they're different, but that's just what I was thinking. But yeah, it's just so interesting angels, how this, this is coming quite up different. after they're dead. Like before Jesus, if you believe Archangel Michael is Jesus, well, was, do we ever see the both of them at the same time? Like, you know, is this a out of, he's not in a flesh body. Interesting. No. What do you think? Are you, are you talking about Michael? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't see him as Jesus, but. <clears throat> that's just me. well or any or any angel like well, it says angels right here it says, yep, flesh yep the michael body. the archangel what's that angels don't have a flesh and blood body or well why not i guess they do well no you have the to angels, the you angels have, that sodom and gomorrah did you have to clarify the difference between supernatural angels and human angels you well, have to put that out there and the, i don't that was never well, the people the supernatural that supernatural angels can take on a flesh body okay it's being recorded so don't don't forget <laughs> <clears throat> don't forget what the people listening need to know what we're talking about so well i would say is angels as in supernatural can take on a flesh body they did at sodom and gomorrah there that's what i'm wondering so 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 you would say because there's one that like God hears their complaints about Sodom and Gomorrah and their wickedness. And then he says, okay, I'm going to, you know, go down and have a look around. And then, he, right. So these two yeah. angels or, or men, which we know are men, right. They're men. They're, yeah. they're, they're, in, they're seen as men, but were they not sent from heaven? In which case they're, yeah, there's something that they can give a body into a man or they can appear as a man I, I don't know or they are a man to begin with in the first place that's the third they are a man and, they, and god called them like to give them a message or they're, yeah, like, they're a man I mean, and they're a the, levite even in the targums it talks about them them Something. them uh being angels sent from heaven right oh yeah they would be angels sent from heaven if you had a, a high priest coming to you telling you a message i'd be like that's well, an angel i don't, from heaven. I don't wouldn't yeah, i, I don't i'd be like oh my gosh an angel from heaven came and told me he said i'm gonna have a see that's how it happens i'm from heaven and earth right i don't know just i'm just thinking out loud here You know what, Albert? You're never going to convince me that angels aren't real. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I heard that one before. I think I heard you say one time, like, you're never going to convince me that terrorism is real. There is <laughs> just, yeah, but there's just way. And you might have been right. Because I didn't, I didn't convince you, did I? So you were right. <laughs> it's not going to be me that convinces you. It's going to be Sandy. <laughs> I mean, it's. What? Or Zach. It's going to be Zach. Zach's going to convince you. On full preterism? No, of the, the angel thing. The... Oh, I, I know that there's <laughs> demonic the other demons. Thing. I know that there's demons. Yeah, whatever the I other thing was. Says... What? 
Yeah, no, exactly that. Oh, I, I mean, it's not going to happen, not in this lifetime. Just because of my experiences and what's going on in the world today with um, all that paranormal stuff. But that's okay. You know why? Because I don't need to convince you of any of that, do I? It's all irrelevant. As long as we can both agree on the meat and potatoes, it doesn't matter about all the side dishes. Yeah, but if we can... <laughs> Okay. I'd like what, remember you, what you know, Jane in this was, Bible, we I, I find it very about... interesting. You know what it says in here, you know, because it talks about it. He is kept with eternal chains. Me too. Darkness for the judgment of the great day. The angels who did not keep their own position, but deserted the proper dwelling in the same way Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities around them. You said they didn't keep their own position, and then and then later you said dwelling, but like position. Their well, own says, well, I'm, proper I'm reading place of authority. Models, right? So again, so how is that not Korah and his rebellion? Like he did the same exact thing that's being described here. He's literally not keeping the authority that he was given. He already had like pretty much one of the highest things you could have, but nah, he wanted more. He wanted to. Well, usurp. then, then you know what? I'll tell you what. You want <laughs> then this Bible is way too complicated for me to ever figure out if i can't just read it what? you can you can no i no, you can't you can because you and i are seeing it totally different at the moment we it, are but we did this before no, we are like <laughs> the lord first then, saved the people out of egypt and later destroyed those who do not believe and he's mm -hmm. giving past and present apostates right that's what he's talking about and he is kept yeah. with eternal chains in darkness for the judgment of the great day, the angels who did not keep their own position, but deserted the proper dwelling. In the same way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them deserted their pro committed sexual immorality and practiced perversions, just as the angels did, and serve as an example by undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. So it says here about Sodom and Gomorrah, it says, and committed sexual immorality and practiced perversions, just as the angels did. Well, Korah and them didn't do that. That's not what they did. They <laughs> it's, didn't. It's, it, they did not. Like they wanted Moses' position, but they didn't practice perversions and sexual immorality. Well, that's no, idolatry. Not, not like that. It says in like manner. Well, it says in, in like this manner. Bible. So it's saying it's in like in like manner. It refers like, to it, 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 you know, just like just like it's like it's like saying all right so these guys over here they screwed up in this way and it's just like these guys over here who screwed up in this way and that's just like these guys over here who screwed up in this way don't be like right, all three of these examples don't do that that's what it's saying it's all it's it all, says, it's right, all right it's here all it says three. in the same way sodom and gomorrah and the cities around them committed sexual immorality and practiced perversions just as the angels did <laughs> is that the Holman Bible? Is the, yeah, it is. is. The, and okay. it's a hell of a lot older than the King James. Oh no, I, I'm with you on that. Like King James is <laughs> it gives you I little happen to be reading from you know? that one, but uh but it reads completely different. I use all of Bible hubs, all okay, the verses. What verse is that? Is that in Jude? Huh? What are you reading? What are you reading? Jude five to seven. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And next sentence, and yes, Albert, sentences can and do, this one does, start with and. It's not a popular thing to do. You don't want to always do it. But And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So that's two different sentences. And where have we read before the angels were were kept in judgment in somewhere else in the New Testament as well, right? That was you. You just read, right? Yeah. And so you're looking for two Peter two four, uh, to seven, I think. Two Peter. Two Peter two four to seven, I believe, is what you're looking for.
And then it says, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, in like manner, what? What's the like manner? The like manner isn't the sin that they were committing, whether it was sexual or, you know, all, whatever. The like manner is talking about how they were destroyed. That's that's the like manner. So yes, as exactly. this city, thank you. As this because city, you're welcome. That was my point yeah, earlier. Sodom, I was like, look, notice how the angels only went which, to Sodom. Which, which one is that, Sandy? I'm I'm still looking at Jude because the next no I know which seven which, is which one. You were looking at six. Yeah, and seven. Okay. And saying, so mine says, and um, he has kept with eternal chains in darkness for the judgment of the great day the angels, who did not keep their visit their own position, but deserted their proper dwelling. Right. So that was that was their sin, and then so he's putting this in rem remembrance of afterward okay so having saved the people out of the land of egypt afterward destroyed them that believe not so there's one example of how he destroyed them for a sin which their sin was to believe that they believed not right like i brought you out of egypt i brought you out here um you know you know what they did in the wilderness and then none of those older generations oh, you know what you know what hang on hang on this isn't this isn't mm -hmm. Korah he's talking about here is it the Lord first saved a people out of Egypt and later destroyed those who did not believe. That's not Korah, no. is it? No, that's not. No. That's the one that we're that's wandering. That's what they're given. Yes. He's giving well, different The Korah examples. thing happened in the wilderness. Yeah, that's not Korah yet. The next one, verse 6, is another group of people that he's calling angels and how they were destroyed and they're reserved in chains. And then in verse seven, he's talking about another group of people in another time, which is Sodom and Gomorrah and their sin, which in this case was the fornication, you know, strange. Flesh, it was also, all... it was also not just Sodom and Gomorrah, but it was also the other cities around them in like manner, five in total. Mm -hmm. So just always remember that people. That talks a lot about that in the Targum. <clears throat> So likewise, also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Now, that's going back to Korah, isn't it? Likewise, these filthy dreamers. Now, who's he talking yeah, they about? Speak, they speak evil of dignities. They despise, and they're like, and oh, you dignity. just want this for yourself, <laughs> Moses. Like, you, you want to just rule over. You brought us out here so you could oh. steal all our stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah moses in this case is the dignity he's the one that went up to the mountain he's the one whose face shone he's the one who was given the revelation you know directly from god or the angels what, whatever so he he's he's the dignity and i would say probably aaron could be too but they're speaking evil of them like god chose moses and how dare you know like they come and speak against the one whom god chose exactly and what else the problem what'd you say oh despise dominion yeah they're despising the dominion that's the rule over them they're like you know what you brought us out here we're not happy with the conditions you know what we're going to overthrow you well god's not happy with that like <laughs> you're not going to overthrow my moses but how and did they throw in how, yet how michael the archangel things? number nine and then right? yet michael the archangel when contending with the devil which i'm gonna have to do i'm gonna have to go with uh i'm gonna have to go with albert on the devil thing just like when jesus went out in the wilderness and the so devil who was michael disputing him. with who was michael the archangel disputing with? <laughs> That he did not dare bring in sure. an abusive condemnation against. Who was it? Right. But said the Lord rebukes thee. I know right. Albert would probably say yeah. it was the people of Israel. No. Mm -hmm. He durst not bring ready for this. So the body of Moses. Do you really think that there, like, there's a body, there's a dispute here that's going on where it's like the devil and god or somebody are literally fighting over like yo let me get his body so i can do something like his actual body so i can do something with it or is it saying 
Michael the Archangel, Jesus, when disputing over the body of Moses, a.k.a. like we say, the body of the church or the body of Christ, right? Oh, my gosh. I can't believe you're throwing that in there. Get wrecked. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> like that is adding to scripture. Don't you agree? So they're disputing over the church? No, they're disputing over the body of Moses. Oh, okay. They're, the body of Moses is the old covenant. So he durst not bring railing accusations against him, but said, the Lord rebuke you. And who was Satan? Well, it would have to be the law or the complainers. Because there's no angel, in my opinion. But, but isn't know. Moses the law? You can make your own conclusions on that. I'm not trying Albert, to... Sure. Albert, are you saying that, that Michael is Jesus, the devil is the Jews, and the body of Moses, the body of Moses is Judaism? <laughs> no. I don't know. I mean, that's kind yeah, of later it's on. Thinking. Yeah, but, um, it's yeah. a picture of that. Kind of what it, it turns is. into, but yeah. Well, it can it can represent okay. it, but but then what you're saying is this didn't actually happen. Do, do not think See, Matthew. I think these things happen, but they represent something. What? Do, do not think Matthew 23, where Jesus pronounces the seven woes on Jerusalem, would not be considered as rebuking them. Would not would not consider what? It seems like Jesus rebuked the Jews many times. Yep. And it's interesting those woes that he pronounces on them are also found in the book of Revelation. Yeah, I'm just not following what Andrew, what are you saying? I, I'm following it. So, so if Michael is Jesus and okay. the right. devil here is the Jews and they're arguing about like the true meaning of Torah no. or whatever. Okay, it's not It's not the Jews. It's not that, no. Okay, so, so the devil here is not the Jews, you would say. It's the law or the something. Devil, like the devil's the law? Yes, because that's the only thing that's there 24-7, 365 that's accusing them. So are you saying yeah, you the, the devil you and the body of Moses are both the And law? then the law is destroyed. It's trampled underfoot. Like, goodbye. Your but whole why thing would, is all gone. Why goodbye. would Jesus? Yet Jesus, what? when contending with the Pharisee. Je Jesus or, never contended with the law. With the oh, the maybe he, he was contending with the Pharisees. That was the contending with the, the devil. Good call, Sandy, maybe. <laughs> Did you just say that? <laughs> what? Yeah. The Church Pharisees not again. Again. with Church the devil. Oh dear. And then what? Jesus, who is the Lord, did show up later. And what did he do? He rebuked them. So there you go. This is a prophecy that came true later with Jesus, the Lord himself, rebuking them. So this didn't really happen. Whoa. It, it doesn't mean that it didn't really happen. It, it well, could okay. be. So we're talking didn't. about the actual physical thing of what actually it's saying. Not what well, it that's the amazing right? thing. Now, Lord, do you think that that actually like took place? Like, like an angel was rebuking with uh, over over the body of Moses. I'm not sure. If you if you look at the way Alan looks at it, then there are principalities. Yes, which I, but, I mean, sort of kind of believe. I say, yeah, you know, but I'm, what, not, what I'm would not fully be, versed like, in, in it, but. Yeah, I mean, but what would be, uh, I guess, the point in the rebuke uh, of the the dispute over the body of Moses in regards to Alan's, I mean, Alan would say that, you know, that's like the angels were in heaven. It was the wars in heaven that ruled over in heaven. It, it wasn't on earth. Mm, well, no, because there's different heavens, scripture that backs right? that up because it's scripture would say mm. we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. So really, everything that's being done in the flesh is about the spirit. What's going on behind in that? Stuff. Could be. Well, it's about the spirit. That's kind of that what flesh. I think. But yeah. Well, like, not just the spirit behind that flesh. I mean, it talks about we. I mean, when we were even reading, reading the Targum, and it and it explicitly explained the seventy nations and the seventy angels. You know. And it alludes to that definitely in the canon. So well, would you say that, that Michael that that is... You have an angel, that, you have an angel but, in heaven that has the face of God at all times? 
I'm not. So there's an saying. angel me. Is there an angel me? No, that's not what no. I'm saying at all. No, so so if My I could angel. ask you this, Lori. So if in in that thought, you know, I'll just go with that for a second. So yeah. the ruler over the, you know, Israel's is Yahweh, correct? Yes. And then the rulers over the other nations are other people besides Yahweh, correct? Like other, other angels. People? Angels. Yes. yes. Okay. So why would why would if if Yahweh is the ruler over Israel, why right. would the archangel Michael be contending with the devil? Wouldn't it be the ruler, which would be Yahweh? Say that again, Doc. So yes, you know. So again, why, why? So obviously it didn't actually happen the way it's written here. Right. Right. Well, we don't so know that there has because to be... it could have been also a principal thing, like a principality but, thing as well. I would just say that the devil than... doesn't mean like a specific one guy, like me or you. Well, it's like gonna... devil. Anybody could be the devil. Yeah. Like, what what I'm trying to get devil. at is, is so far every person has put a, interpretation that has to extrapolate things to make more sense of it like nobody's saying oh yeah right. just exactly what it says that's exactly what happened you know yeah. so we're all yeah. going okay either you know archangel michael means jesus or it means you know uh, something else and then the devil somebody yeah, else we all have a for sure we yeah all have so we're all like notion. bringing that absolutely to yeah so the, the what the thing do you is, is, how do you see it andrew how do you see it uh makes me think about matthew 4. and what does matthew 4 say um the well that there Jesus you Lord. find jesus and satan contending over if you consider the body of moses a reference to the, the law of moses yeah never because, going, that's because jesus and the devil are going back and forth on scriptures and then he says, go say, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God. Makes me think about Lord rebuke you, right? Um, yeah, he does quote Deuteronomy all three times. Right. But I just think it's kind of weird that, like, you have, let's just say it's, you know, you know, it, it's all over the place. I mean, you have verse five. Uh, hold on, no, not verse five. Um, it's just kind of like... <laughs> I don't know. It just seems to kind of be going all over the place. Like you have, um, oh, let me see here. Oh, hold on. You know, like even before the you have five, three exa four examples. Yeah, and, and it's all in like different time periods, different situations, yep. different things going on. I mean, the overarching principle is that, like, you know, like God saved people, but you know, there these people were rebelling or didn't believe, and you know, They're they left their position. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's so it's hard like to pull one one example out and say that's exactly what he's talking about. Or to take in, one in of these examples. Position. Yeah, or to take one of these examples and say, okay, well, this is how you have to interpret all the other ones as well. Right. You know, so I don't know. It's definitely I I, I agree. Jude is a very uh almost cryptic. Yeah, I, I've got no problem with Michael being Jesus, as long as it's not the Jehovah's Witness version. Right? Like, I don't think Jesus is the first created being. Yeah, it's or, definitely not the Jehovah's yeah. Witness version. No. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, as long as they still understand Jesus and Michael being the one who's actually the creator of all things, like Colossians one, Hebrews one, John one talks about, and that's fine. Well, we just think we. I think I think we would say, because of the word archangel, like he's the one who takes all command from the Father, and I can go with that very easily. I mean, well, Jesus archangel says is that top over messenger. and over. Yeah. He's the chief messenger. He's the the highest right. guy. Which, if you believe Jesus is the, you know, the pre incarnate but, Jesus, but, he, but the, the highest the guy than, takes um, orders. But no, he's he's the one bringing the message, though. Like that's why he's the so chief. He's the one, Michael. The R he's R the one saying, like, right? I'm gonna do the thing. I'm gonna he, cover all your sins, right? He's he, the chief messenger, he's the, isn't? Yeah, he's the prophet that 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 God told Moses, I will send another prophet. Him you must hear. Yeah. Not that's it wasn't Jesus. talking about Joshua. It was talking about Jesus. 
Although Joshua was a foreshadow, maybe. Jesus. Yeah, he was. But no, when, when God said to Moses, I will send him, the prophet, you know, another, what? Prophet. Yeah. Who, that's Jesus. He came, he said, you know, I say nothing but what the father tells me to say. Right? No words that I speak are my own words. So that's a true, I mean, that's a commander unlike any kind of earthly commander, right? Because even, even an earthly commander, no matter how, how good, loyal you are to, to the one above you, you still have your own thoughts. But Jesus being, you know, he's an angel in the sense that, yeah, he was the one who was sent to bring the message. That's, that's awesome. I love it. What about, what about this whole dispute thing? Because I don't know, like, the history in that time, but we see, especially now in the land of Israel, where, you know, they like to take uh, the bones of a person and, um, and, you know, they, they memorialized them, they treasured them, you know, like, bring my bones up from Egypt. Who was that, Joseph? You know, like, um, and then they'll build a church over that and they'll they'll sit there and you know everybody comes there and you know worships basically you know makes the body or the bones of some dead saint more the the focus than god himself like maybe this is why the bones were not allowed to be brought down from the mountain you doesn't does, you know what i'm talking about like, Jesus saying, no, you're not going to bring the bones down to the people because then they're just, they'll memorialize him, you know, and build a, build a synagogue or church or whatever, you know, and this will become the place of worship. And God didn't intend for that because where was there, the intention was to go into the promised land, to not hang out here, but to actually enter into the promised land. Well, we know that you know, the body of Moses would never be found because he represents a law and it would never be found, right? Right. And we're not, we're, we're not supposed to stay under the law. But, you know, as, as children, you know, as, as literal babies, I mean, as we get brought up in the word, we, we do have to go through and understand the whole law, right? Until we come into that understanding that the law, we can't save ourselves and we come to the cross and right? We go on in, in our faith. So we can use the law, just like it says, as a schoolmaster, but we're not to hang out there and worship it or whatever. And, but I do think it could, you know, literally Moses' bones could still be, you know, like wherever, wherever God had them buried. Like, I think it could be physically true and spiritual truth, both. So why were they disputing over it? Was it something to do with the covenants? One didn't want the covenant fulfilled, the other one did? Or why do you guys think? Well, I see, well, in my view, I don't think it has anything to do with Jesus disputing against the Jews. I'm not saying the devil there is the Jews. I think Jesus rebuked the Jews tons of times. Mm -hmm. even even in context of them arguing about the law and things but whenever he was actually being tempted by the devil in matthew 4 which i don't think is the jews because i don't take i don't i don't share albert's view on the devil always but yeah, yeah. so in matthew, i do in some in some cases i can't yeah sure yeah or I mean, Satan, I can't yeah, sure sometimes sure. yeah for sure i mean like mm -hmm. yeah there's tons of times but like yeah. you know, but where where is the um story we could go read it is it somewhere else besides jude what story about what Sto there wasn't any story in it really what where do you mean? the archangel michael contending over moses oh home. i see the only place i'm aware of it doesn't talk about it in the old testament not that i know of hmm Maybe Zachary Albert. Who talks about it? There's two, what these, there's what two instances, I believe. There's the one that we were we, we know of that we were talking about, and there's one other one. Uh, it's Repeat similar. But one more time. It's uh, dirt not bring reeling accusation. That one. We intending over the body of Moses. That verse. 
There's nobody yeah, talking. There, there, there's no. Well, it's in the New Testament somewhere, isn't it? Disputing for the body of Moses. Yeah, that's not anywhere. Except it's Jesus. not anywhere. The only other time Except I even Jesus. know of Michael and the devil being in the same verse is Revelation twelve. Right. That. There you go. That's the other time. You found it. Yeah, there, there, there's this That's isn't like you, you're not gonna go to Deuteronomy and, and see this taking place. So that's why you know, he's so mentioning all these stories. Like he's he's bringing to your remembrance all these stories, and then he gets to yet Michael the archangel when it's like, well, we should be able to reference this somewhere. And <laughs> isn't that strange? Like this uh, makes me think. Maybe, so is there something missing? <laughs> What? Because oh, one of the Bibles um, references the Assumption of Moses, the book, and that's where it talks about. It. Yeah, I've never, I've never read that. Okay, dude, mm. I had it. I don't know what I did with it. Is there something about that in the Book of Enoch? Because there's other things in Jude. I mean, Jude even brings Enoch up a few verses later. Origin talks about the assumption of Moses. Um, end of it all. I'm sure it's online. Huh. Here's a wiki source. Look at okay. Oh, here we go. It says Moses died in the mount. Michael and other angels are sent to bury him. They find Satan about to carry off the body and and meaning to induce the people to worship it. They contend with him and he resists and says, The body is mine, for all material things belong to me. No replies Michael, by his Holy Spirit, all we were created, and from the face of God, his spirit went forth, and the world came into being. Possibly at this time, too, Michael reproached him for having brought sin into the world by inspiring the serpent to deceive Adam and Eve. Then, say, where, what is this I'm reading here? What is it that you're reading? Because uh, that, that was a flag. Right? I, don't know, I, was trying, I was trying to look <laughs> like I was just trying to Google like, um, you know, did they make, did they worship bones and? Hmm. Lori, are you, Lori, are you saying that you think that the body of Moses there is actually talking about Moses's actual body? Um, not necessarily. It could have been the law, right? The old covenant. If, if it, if it actually, yeah, that's. I mean, I'm but, gonna, I'm but it sure. wasn't it wasn't to happen for a long time yet. If it if it were actually a reference to his actual body, I could see. I mean, I wouldn't have a problem with that because of how I view Revelation 11 with the two witnesses. But I mean, that's yeah. going to be um, way that's going to be way out there for most people. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I could. Okay, I could so here I could here it, um, this so it's a pseudepigrapha, the assumption of Moses, right? And it says. Um, when, so here's, he's asking the question, when, when did the apostle derive the, the story to which he refers and what was the occasion of the dispute? To the latter question, a conjectural answer alone can be given, taken into consideration. So, because um, so, it talks about the burial of Moses, we see that it was intended to be a secret transaction, buried him in a valley in the land of Moab over against Beth Hor, but no man knoweth of his sepulcher till this day. I'm just trying to find it in the book, Assumption of Moses. It's actually on Bible Hub. Oh, you know what? This is Clement of Alexandria. So a book. But this is interesting because it says, okay, without reading it all, it's it, 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 it's saying that pr the argument is because Moses murdered a man. You see? 
Remember when he, he slew a man? Now this, this Clement of Alexandria says, so Moses was called Joachim, and he also had a third name in heaven after his assumption as the initiated, and then it's, I don't know, Hebrew meaning Melchi, or yeah, which there you go, like the Melchizedek, Melchi. He seems to quote the same authority again, the initiated Melchi say that he slew the Egyptian merely with a word as Peter slew an Ananias and Sapphira. Peter slew Ananias and Sapphira. We know that the slaying of the Egyptian was part of the devil's claim against Moses in the assumption. But none of that's in our Bible, actually. But we could probably figure that out. I feel like I've kind of known that. That what? Some of this. He's well, he, he, he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't slew them actually. He um they lied, right, about how much money they got for the land. And they lied to the Holy Spirit. And then they died. That's what, that's what he said. Yeah. They died, yeah. Well, first one and then the other. First him and then her. But when Moses slayed the um Egyptian, it doesn't say that it was with his word or that the Holy Spirit then no. slew them or but so much is left out, right? Yeah. Like honestly, like I think something. you really have to go to the extra biblical books and that's I really, really enjoy reading that. Um have y'all looked at Zechariah chapter three yet? In regards to what? Um, I'm looking here. At, I got a uh, G.K. Bill and D.A. Carson's humongous commentary on New Testament's use of the Old Testament, and what they brought up was Zechariah 3, verse 2, where it's talking about, um, it says that the tradition of angels disputing with the devil goes back to Zechariah 3, 2. Um, the idea seems to be that when Moses dies, Satan wants to claim or destroy the body of Moses rather than bury him, perhaps on grounds of Moses, because Moses was a failure just as Satan wants to claim Joshua in some sense in Zechariah 3, 2. Because Zechariah 3, 2, I think that's, isn't the devil there trying to accuse Joshua and <coughs> is it the Lord or the angel of the Lord rebukes the devil? Is that, is that right? You want me to read? I can't remember off the top of my head. Somebody said, knows and it. The, and the, Lord, the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuked thee. O Satan, even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? What is that? What was, what was the first verse? Uh, and he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan stand, standing at his right hand to resist him. I don't know. I hadn't really studied Zechariah, so I don't know what's going on. The and then now, now Joshua, verse 3 is, now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Oh, so Satan's got a bone to pick about Joshua too because he wore the filthy garments. This is what it sounds like. See, he's always the accuser, right? So he's he's accusing Moses like, oh no, he was a murderer, you know, or, or, or Joshua, which I don't even know. He was standing before him with filthy garments. So this already happened in the Old Testament. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is that a different Lord? 
I mean, is that, is that Jesus? Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Hmm. That's why I wanted Matthew here, but sadly, he's not. Oh, well, maybe he can listen to this recording and make his comments later. Did we come to any conclusions? No, just as confused as ever. <laughs> yeah, like I said, Jude is a fascinating book. Okay, the word, I'm, oh, I'm curious, the word, I know the word body there is, is soma in Jude 1, nine. It's used, um, it's used 142 times in the New Testament, and I've, I'm a, I, I've never done this, I'm assuming no one here has ever gone through all 142 usages of that word and looked at every single one of those verses to see if it ever has a symbolic meaning or is it yeah. to an actual body? Yeah, that's what I wrote my dissertation on, actually. All right, yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> dissertation for your, for your bachelor's? Nice. No, my, my doctorate. Oh, well, I gotcha, I gotcha. Man, you didn't, you didn't skip a few, few grades. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. awesome last time I talked to you. Yeah, I just, you know, buckled down, you know, stop playing around, just really... Hit the books. Hey man, seven weeks, man. Just give me seven weeks. <laughs> You're done. That's cool, man. But no, I have not. Definitely have not. That might be something to look into, Lori. Might help you maybe read, read all 142 verses with the Greek word soma and see if the word bodies. If, that Greek word for body is ever used in a non-literal way, not non-physical way. Which word? Soma. For, it's the Greek word for body. Well, there's different. I mean, Sarx is probably another, but at least in Jude 1, nine, where it says the body of Moses, the Greek word for body is soma. It's used 142 times. You can look up all you those verses and see. Yeah. What do you mean used in a non physical yeah, way? Like, like how we were talking about, could is it is it is it possible that what Jude is actually saying is when he says they were arguing about the body of Moses, sometimes we might refer to a body of you know something like not Moses' actual body, but maybe like his writings, his work, right? Like or something, right? But I'm saying look up the 142 times this Greek word is used and see if it's ever used in a context that's not talking about someone's actual physical body. If it that, is, does it, does it Jesus' body. reference to the body, the bride, or the body of the bride as being the church? That's a good question. Uh, let, me, let, me, let, me look that, let me look at that and see. If, I don't know if it's the same Greek word or not. I, I kind of want to look, look at that now. Well, that, that's like, that's Ephesians 1, Colossians mm -hmm. 1. Let's see. Maybe here, let's see. Did we do Second Peter yet? No, you didn't do Second Peter 2, yeah. 4. It does. And you mean read the whole book? It's saying to answer your question, Ephesians 1, no. 23. It is the same Greek word in Ephesians 1, 23, talking about the church being the body of Christ. So, Soma. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's also yep. It's also in Colossians. So the one. same. It's also in Colossians eighteen. He is the head of the body, the church, uh, and it, it's the same thing there. So sometimes <laughs> the body being can refer Maybe to the church. Be... Sometimes Soma can be talking about the church. So I don't see why it could not at least be in the realm of possibility that it could be referring to the you know, collective body of, Jew of Jews. 
if it in some text it's referring to the collective body of Christians. Well, what about what about the scripture about the body being the temple too? Is there a scripture that uh, says that's, that like straight yeah, up? That's a that's Second Corinthians three, right? this is why i like this is why i like to have the uh um what is it that's not there the concordance you can just look um, up i'm not no second corinthians 3 is about the the old law passing away what Zach, what's that? What's where is that? Where it talks about the? Would you say, Sandy, temple being the body? Um, I know that's chapter six. I think it's First Corinthians chapter six, sixteen. Or something First like Corinthians. That. Okay, I thought it was Second. Let's go look here. For, uh, uh, yeah, it, it yeah it is First Corinthians six nineteen. Uh, nineteen. Sorry. Or do you not know that your body soma is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Yep. It is same Greek word. Um, I don't think that's talking about the church there, though. I think that's talking about the actual individual Christians. Yeah, the body. Uh, hang on. Yeah, now. but you know the, the you do have like you know Ephesians chapter two and three and stuff like that. that talk, or I think it's just chapter two. It talks about uh, you know collectively the. Uh, being built into a spiritual house. Oh, uh, First Peter two. No, uh, Ephesians two. Oh, being built up. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I was thinking about the, you know. But yeah, that's that too. Yeah. Yeah, spiritual you know, house, the stones, the royal priesthood, and holy nation. Yeah. So. Yeah, the, the the living stones being built. Yeah, upon I know. I know you're talking about Ephesians two nineteen, maybe. Okay, here's one. Is Acts nineteen twelve? They so were, from the God were brought. Nineteen twelve. Uh, yeah, it's not Soma there. The body. Oh, what did you say? Uh, it's uh, the Greek word. Cross, meaning skin, body, surface. So I guess it's just another Greek word for that can refer to someone's physical body. But yeah, that's not the that's not the same Greek word as Jude one nine, the body. And, and then the other time, Ephesians four four, it's got a different Greek number, four nine eight three. Ephesians 4 4. One no, it's, uh, it's, it's Soma. Yeah, it, it's Soma in 4 4. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's the same one as uh, Jude 1 9. Oh, it's the one just above it. Ephesians 3 6. There. That's yeah, different. yeah, that's something different. Now, what's that one? Same body. There's one body and one. Yeah, there's only a few different Greek words used for body. I only know. I, I only know of three. Like, I mean, there could be more than three. I know. I know three. But look at look at how many translations for that word in the Hebrew. There's there's many for for the word body. Like one, two, three. So in Greek, you got. Soma, Kros, and uh, uh, Sarks, or Sarkos. Those are the ones I know of. I guess it could be others, but just the ones I know. So, I mean, like, I think there's more than, there, there might be 20 different Hebrew words for the word body um, in the Hebrew. That's interesting. What's that, Lori? Well, you know, you're talking about um, the archangel being 
Michael being Jesus, right? The angel. Uh, uh, what? Like, like his angel. Whose angel? Are you talking about it being yeah, Jesus? Yeah. Peter's angel? angel. Peter's angel. What? Peter's, Peter's angel. angel. What about Peter's it's angel? It's Peter's angel. <laughs> it wasn't Peter. Okay, so it was Hank. his angel. Do you remember that verse? They were like, "Oh no, it's not. It's not Peter, and that's impossible. It's got to be his angel." That's interesting. Like, okay. Totally a verse. Yeah. Um. So Jude nine talks about Michael the archangel, right? Uh. uh And then in Daniel 12, 1, it says, At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince, who has charge of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. And there you so, go. There I go up. Well, if you go with the preterist, you know, the, like the second coming, which... <clears throat> um, the, the coming in the clouds or the unseen coming, which I, I'd say is like the judgment, the coming judgment. Jesus had already well, died and rose again. So how did he come? As an uh, angel, as a commander. I think maybe. it was saying. Well, actually it <laughs> says here, how can you do that when, you, when Hebrews says, and to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? So that yeah. kind of so a which little of the bit angels contradicts it. That? What? What's, what's to that? which of the angels did he say that? The answer would be Jesus. Yeah. No, well, to he Jesus. Com he commands all the <laughs> angels to worship Jesus. He says, and to which of the angels has he ever said? sit at my right hand until I make enemies your foot pistol. So in other words, he's saying none. Right. To me, that's what that scripture says. No, that's, that, 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 that's, the, that's the argument I always use too. But perhaps the answer is to one and only one being Jesus Christ. So you think he was an angel? What scripture is that? I'm going to go read the, it. I thought angels that's were created. Hebrews 1, 6. Or that's about let all the angels of God worship him. I don't know about the to which of the angels he said. 13 maybe? 14? Or maybe before that. I don't know. I'm not looking at it. Lori can probably tell you. Well, to me, like in this scripture here, at that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people will arise. So do you think Jesus just protected the Jews? Well, I would say the faithful Jewish remnant who became Christians. He definitely didn't protect the Jews. They got slaughtered, millions of them by the Romans. Yeah. At that time, Michael, the great prince, who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress. He protected whomever he, he protected whomever he wanted. I mean, all the disciples didn't necessarily live. Either. I mean, eventually they. Well, they were probably all dead by that point. They came to a horrible end. Yeah, they were probably all dead before that point that you're reading about anyway. You know, there is a one there is one other verse in the New well, Testament that, that it talks about the archangel though, that besides Revelation twelve, because in First Thessalonians four sixteen it doesn't say Michael, but it does say Archangel in uh four sixteen. And then Daniel ten twenty one. But I will tell you what is inscribed in the book of truth. There is none who contends by my side against these except michael is, is, there, is there a verse in the gospel of john that says somewhere that isn't it john 5 the dead will hear the voice of the son of god and they will live don't people get raised don't people get resurrected because of the voice of jesus in john 5 zach is that right first that's I mean, I mean, I mean, john 5 that talks about um you know, they're they're going to hear in the voice, and then uh, doesn't it, it say says, the, doesn't it say the voice of the Son of God or Son of Man? Because if it is, 
in First Thessalonians four sixteen, it says it's the voice of an archangel that raises the dead. Yeah, twenty five, five twenty five. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming, and now is uh, now here, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of Man, and those who will hear will live. So that's Jesus's voice raising the dead. But in First Thessalonians four sixteen, it's the archangel's voice who's raising the dead. So no, it, it doesn't say that. Man. It doesn't say it that. Says, it says, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the voice with the cry of, of command with the voice of an archangel. Right. But it doesn't say that he's that voice. Right. I'm no, the, 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 but the voice, but the voice is the, the trumpet. voice of an archangel. It's the voice of an archangel. Which is sounds like a trumpet or is and, a trumpet? No, it says and with the sound of a trumpet of God. With but the voice of an archangel. But those could be three separate things. It could be Christ, the voice of an archangel, and the trumpet of God. They could be all three different. Well, they could they could all be the same, too. Could. Mm -hmm. But if it's the voice and then what of I was, an archangel what I that raises them, and in John 5, it's Jesus. Um, yeah. Say that again, Andrew? Well, it says it's the... Again, no matter how you take it, it says whether you take... I mean, it says... Yeah, it's the Lord himself descending. That's the first thing we see. But it says, with the voice of an archangel. Uh -huh. And so, according to this verse, it's the voice of an archangel that is somehow involved in these dead people rising. Can you read the verse, please? Because the Lord the himself Lord will himself. descend from heaven with a cry of a command, with the voice of an archangel. Uh, and uh, no, are you actually reading it, or are you paraphrasing? No, I I'm think reading it. it. No, I'm reading it. The voice of what? The voice of an archangel. An archangel or the archangel? Uh, it says, well, I'll look it up in Greek. Are, are you saying that the definite article is there? I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just asking you what it says. I'm just trying to clarify. An, an archangel. Here, I'll, I'll look it up real quick. Let's say I'm the voice it. of an archangel or the voice of the archangel. Well, the English translation and, I was using said an. Okay, but I don't care. I, I want to know what it really says. Okay, that's why I, I'm grabbing my degree. I'm going to agree. Thank you, buddy. Much appreciated. Mm -hmm. But there's two. Is there not two archangels? What about Gabe, Gabriel? Is he not called an archangel? Uh, see that that's that's what I'm disputing, or maybe trying to dispute. It. I don't think so. I, there's no the Gabriel should never be called an archangel. He's just an angel, if anything. There's only one archangel. You can only have one. The top, the, the top guy. He's the commander, Why? like the one, I see the chief saying. messenger. Yeah, there's no definite article there, at least not in this one. So it would be an. Interesting. Yeah, it's not the. It's All right. Okay. Voice of Archangel. Let's look up Gabriel. Yeah, it's just, it's just voice Gabriel? of Archangel. There's no the. Yeah, so so that's what Stacy would say. Stacy would say, yeah, there is no definite anything. It's not either an or the. It's just voice of Archangel. It doesn't say an or the. It's just archangel voice that's what you're saying yep that's it yep okay fair enough that's what stacy would uh that's what he said back in our angel video which uh i believe you just watched sandy so my only point was is if in john 5 jesus says it's going to be the son of god or the son of man or whatever you know it's going to be his voice that raises the dead and it's the voice of Archangel in First Thessalonians that raises the dead. It would seem to be the, making a, an equivalent here. Jesus, though. Damn. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about Gabriel's not connected to Archangel anywhere that I can see. Gabriel and Michael are the only two that are mentioned by name in scripture, right? Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. 
Thomas, you say what were we looking at there? One. Ephesians four sixteen. Uh, First Thessalonians four sixteen. First, oh, was four sixteen. What'd you say, Doug? So I guess you could say the devil. Is he an angel that's named the devil? Is the devil an angel? No, I think you just said that you know Michael and Gabriel the the only ones that remain. Right. Yeah. I don't. I don't think the devil was ever an angel or ever was or is or will be. Really? What do you think the devil is then? Uh. Well, I think he's dead now. <laughs> well, what what was he in the garden? Like, was that an angel or? Oh. Uh. Well. I would say there he just disguised himself like a creature, a serpent or whatever, or he used a serpent or, you know, however you want to view that. Um, I don't think he was an angel. I don't think he was ever good at any point. I don't think he was ever, like, good and went bad, you know, like most people would say. Why do you think that? Well, everything you ever read about him in the Bible says he was a murderer, liar, sinner from the beginning. So I, I never read about anything that says he was good and then, okay, now I'm going to go bad. I mean, I know they take. Okay, I, they got, take I, got, I got your answer, Lori. So. What did you say, Zach? I said, I know people make him good because in Ezekiel. Right, which is talking about the king of Tyre. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or Isaiah 14, which is about king of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Here we go. How, how tell me if this sounds too far fetched for you? So being being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance, because he's a, a son, and angels are also called sons of God, are they not? Would you agree? Do we have to argue that? Albert would not. I don't. I'm not arguing with that. Okay. So so just now think about angels what we were just talking about that they're messengers and they're priests okay right priest messages cora all that okay being made so much better than the priests as he has speaking of jesus by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they how so well we say it all the time jesus is prophet priest and king right he he was all those things so so that's how he's got a more excellent name for unto which of the priests or prophets if, you know I, I would say just look at the whole past bible to to who did he ever say um at any time thou art my son this day have i begotten thee and again he says uh this is in second samuel <coughs> seven fourteen. Uh, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he says, and let all the angels of God worship him, and let all the priests who, well, I don't know, maybe they're called angels after they're dead, I don't know, but they're called both angels, messengers, priests. Right? Let them all worship him because he's also a son. But what makes this son, Jesus Christ, any different than any of the other sons of God? Well, because this one God chose and said, I will be to you a father. You shall be to me a son, right? He, he's the one he sent to be, to fulfill all things. That's what makes him better because doesn't Jesus say like, um, he, He's our brother, you know, our friend. He's our, you know, counselor, everlasting father. I mean, he's our high priest, prophet, king, God, Lord God. I mean, isn't he all things to us? Interesting uh, or no? I mean, I, I, always, <clears throat> I always thought what made him better was the fact that he created everything. I mean, he's God. Yeah, and he, well, that was, that was the verses just before then, wasn't it? 
like I could have backed up. Well, verse eight, verse um, eight says, "Your but, but of the Son, He says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever." And then verse nine says, forever. "Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you." Even thy God hath anointed thee with the oil, fellers, above thy fellows. So that he's he's a fellow of the angels. If he's a you know if we're if you're a fellow, you're an equal sort of. I mean, you're like among the same, but yet, yeah, you reap who being the brightness of his glory and express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the Majesty on high being made so much better than the angels why because he did this he's the one who came he's he's the one who purged us of our sin and what's it starts off okay god at sundry times and i and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets has in these last days so right we can read how god you know spoke through a burning bush even right but he has in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. That's why. And by whom he also made the world. Because by him, for him, and through him, all things were created. That have been created, as John 1, 3 would say. If it's been, if it's been if it's been made, he made it. Right. And there's nothing that's made that he didn't make. <laughs> right. If, if if it's been made, he made it. Right. Mm -hmm. Who, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the power by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right so to which of the angels did he say any of this did, did he say you know you are my son you know whom i'm well pleased he didn't there's only one there's only one son of god he said that to there's only one you know and sons of god i think in genesis aren't they sons of god um and also angels of god are they kind of like used interchangeably if you're referring to genesis 6 i think Lori and albert would have two different answers for you mm. well i'm very new very new to the whole uh michael the archangel being uh Jesus. Well, like I, I said, I, 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 don't have, that I, don't have, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with it unless it's the Jehovah's Witness type view of Michael being Jesus, and and because they don't think Jesus is actually the God Creator of all things. Right, which I didn't even know that before. Right. Like, I just I would reject the Jehovah Witness, and they kind of be like, you know, I just I just can't study because you know you think that an angel is is the son of god and that's you know but here i am today <laughs> albert wants us to read yeah, he's not an angel he's not an angel he's only called an angel because he's a messenger that he's not a supernatural yeah, angel. A i'm not saying it's jehovah's witness it's not like that Wait. Uh -oh. but if angels <laughs> are messengers are priests or or priests are referred to as angels because they're you know they're just like he was, why was he upset with Corin Cor uh, in the first place? Because they spoke out against the prophet and the high priest that God had chosen. Right? Yeah, literally. That's literally the whole problem. It was the rebellion yeah. of Korah. Exactly. Very key. Yeah. Very crucial moment they're in all, history that not many people know about. Yeah. Ask people if about the Bible, be like, you know about the rebellion of Korah? They're going to be like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. If God calls you, did you say Korah was a priest? He, what, he was. What, what he, he, was he was one he of the was, highest things. He was a Levite. He, he was of the, 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 the cast of the, the priests. 
he wasn't the high priest like Aaron was, but that's what he wanted. He wanted to overtake Moses and Aaron, and he and the others that rebelled with him wanted to take their job. Korah was one of Levi's. Korah was one of Levi's three sons, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. There we go. Okay. Oh, so he was jealous. Wait, so was he the brother of Aaron then, or son of Aaron? How how's that work? No, no, no. He so just like, jealousy always like to play into the picture too. It's like Cora, Cora would have been like the granddad of Moses and Aaron, right? Or like the <laughs> yeah. uncle, or great uncle, or like the uncle or something. Like Cora, Cora was definitely one of the Levites from like long standing, but he was trying to bring up to the whole congregation, like, oh well, there's so many Levites, like, but there's all of us. Like, why you you picked your brother, like you you're true doing favoritism and stuff. Like he was trying to so who, dis- who was the other? Who are the other two? There's uh, always a family. To a Biram and and Dathab or something like that. Dathan, so, Dathan and Abiram, I think, were the other two. Yeah, and from Abiram, you get Moses and Aaron, right? Mm, maybe I I I'm I'm a little bit weak on that, so I yeah, can't say. So it, but... I think Levi would have been Moses and Aaron's like great granddad, and Abiram would have been like their granddad. I don't know who their dad would have been. That's interesting. If that's the case, because wow, well, now yeah, I can see would, why that they would, would make Cora their... like their that would, that would make Cora like their great uncle. Right. That's like <laughs> that's crazy. Wait, I thought that I thought the priests were chosen from the tribe of Levi because they came from Aaron. Like he they was came the from first. Levi. No, they came from. They came from Levi. Oh, yeah. I've got it backward. Okay. Okay. And Aaron well, still their Levi. family. Oh. Yeah, Aaron came from Levi. Yeah, Aaron came from Levi. That's why he, he was chosen to be the priest. So he was the high priest, and then all the others were priests. And those were the guys, as I say, those are the messengers. Those are the ones of heaven. Those are mm-hmm. angels. It mm-hmm. makes sense to me on a totally human basis. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I'll be quiet now. Moses, <laughs> Moses, is, uh, Moses and mom and dad are both Levites, right? I'm not even sure. I think there were. Let me look that up. I think there were. I think, I think Exodus 1 tells us. Let me look it up. Uh, yeah, Exodus 2, actually, verse 1. A man from the house of Levi went and married a daughter of Levi. And then, you know, yada, 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 you keep reading, they have Moses. Well, there you go. So but both Aaron, Moses and Aaron, Aaron were both of Levi. Right, but Aaron, was he, I don't know, did they, I'm assuming Moses and Aaron had the same dad, but I don't know if we're told if they had the same mom or not. I don't know. You guys were going to have to it, it, it wouldn't have mattered, though. I mean, at that, at that time, it's just, you know, the you know the male being from Levi is what would have mattered, right? Priestly line, wise, you know, line wise. Which is why God has to make this statement in Hebrews also when He says, "Let all the angels of God worship Him." Oh, so what does that He mean? He's saying you know, for fellow, it's like, yeah, He's saying. Right, because if let all the Levites, God, all the priests of God worship he's, him, he's saying yeah. worship him. Albert, yeah. like Albert, we're, that we're includes, told to worship him. Albert, that, <laughs> Albert, you know that includes Matthew twenty-eight, the angel who was there who rolls a stone away. He has to worship Jesus also. Okay, it does okay. All right, I'll have to think on that one. All right, mm-hmm. I'm going to write that in my copy book. I'll, I'll, oh. I'll come back at you later with that. Because <laughs> remember, the angel said, talking about Jesus, he's not here. So we know that angel. That's right. Jesus. He did say that. He did say the Jesus you're looking. He's not here. He's, That's he's right. Over there. That's right. Uh, why? Yeah. Why is uh, the manna right, or is the manna called angels' food, or is that something else? I'm thinking of. Think hey, you like you like devil's cake what or angels? angels food cake? <laughs> speaking of speaking of manna, Sandy, read Revelation two seventeen and eighteen. Uh, no, just verse seventeen. Revelation 2 17. 
That'll give you something I feel to feel bad. You. We're making Sandy read so much tonight. Yeah, th- th- this will give you something to give you a headache about <laughs> that you don't have a clue what it's talking about. What is she going to read? Revelation 2.17? Yeah, Revelation 2.17. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, this is what I've been looking at too, overcoming. That's what we're called to do, right? Overcome. Will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, save he that receive it. Nice. That's what I was wondering. Like, did, That's what I asked. I was like, did Jesus get renamed Michael? Because Michael means one who is like God, right? Yeah, well, what about the scripture that says that nobody knows his name? It's secret. We want it to be about us, but what if it's about him? I didn't know. I didn't I didn't know until like last week, so it was a secret <laughs> from me. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, these things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Hmm. I don't know. It's pretty cool, though, because verse 26 and 27 is Psalm 2 language, which is usually used about Jesus, but here it's talking about Christians. That's, I know, see, because look at this, stop, okay, this might be too far out there, but what if, just think about it, um, what if the seven letters that are written to the churches, what if they're for each and every one of us individually? Because the whole point, I think, in scripture is to overcome. He who overcomes. Like, we are the church. We're all these churches. You're right, Sandy. I think that is way out there. Is that? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You're definitely not a preterist then. I mean, you, you could take warnings Why? from them, maybe, right? Well, because it was written to those churches. Why would that make me not a pre- Why would that make me not a preterist? Not a full preterist, right? Because You're only a full preterist, preterist if you believe that all prophecies are all fulfilled and there's absolutely nothing left to be fulfilled. It's all done. So when Albert, you say that- did you hear? Did you hear what? Did you hear what he just said? Though, look, look, Jesus said. It is finished. He's done. He sat down at the right hand of the Father. And then if we look with Psalms 110, sit here at my right hand until I make right. until I make enemies your footstool. And then what's verse two? It's like and in the presence of your enemies. So so that happened. Jesus came, he died. He's never gonna come again and die again. He's not gonna come in the future to do what? What's he going to come again in the future to do? To save Israel? I mean, we're one. And he's only ever, he was, he was a man. It was Listen to her man preach. Once oh, that's hilarious. Right? Remember when she but used this to say the, the opposite? <laughs> I, w- I would, no, because, because, because my preterism says it's all finished. He did it all, but we're still here. We're his body. He doesn't have to come right. back and and teach us again he doesn't have to come back and cry but but we're not done we're st- we still have to overcome he overcame he finished his work and he sat down we're still here am i overcoming as body. right what am i so if you survive I mean, till the end you're gonna you say, you're gonna be <laughs> saved to the end of what <laughs> i don't know <laughs> To the end I mean, of the we fake have, world. 
we have to go back to the cross when we become a Christian. We have to go, we have to spiritually, you know, we have to like go back, right? Somebody tells You're us the word. You're speaking Greek to me right now. You have to speak English. You have to go back 2,000 years to the cross. Okay. What are you going to believe? Now I mean, I'm at believer? the cross 2,000 years ago. Now what? Now what do I do? Are you, are you a believer? Yes. I hope so. Do you think... <laughs> you hope so why you're not sure no what i am are you hoping for <laughs> what are you hoping you're getting, for you're getting, Albert, getting, you're not a preference of course i'm a believer like hello <laughs> well if you're a believer then you're hoping for something and if you're hoping for something then you're not a preterist because of course preterists I'm a believe preterist. all i believe that my, my lord god and savior did all the things that he promised on time he did it it's all accomplished he's whoa, a winner whoa, 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 whoa. what did i miss i just got back Oh, hey, hi. <laughs> I have to go, by the way. See I you mean, later. I, I just got back and Albert was screaming. Don't leave, somebody. don't leave. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Keep going. Go ahead. What happened? Well, I, you have a hope in something. Say, say, uh, hoping... Sandy's trying to explain her, her preterism to us. Oh, let me guess. She's, she claims to be full, but she's going back to acting like Matthew. <laughs> am i right am i in the ballpark here? Uh, no comment where's zach when you need him zach's the only one who can get through to her he disconnected he went to sleep or something yeah well, i was wondering where zach went he, he left like 15 minutes ago it's okay you got it I you mean, got the explanation yourself you don't need zach <laughs> No, I had a 90 minute massage today. I can't be getting Sandy all getting me all stressed out, worked up, get these knots. Oh my stressed out. What me. if what if you convince her though? How do you know they like why do you have such a nice maybe you'll convince her? You never know. I don't know what the issue is. <laughs> you do. Well, maybe if you were you just got back. Sorry, tell him what the situation is. Sandy has left. So Lori's gonna have to fill me in. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> Sandy, explain. Lori's, Lori's lost too. Sandy left. She's no, here. She's what there. are you talking about? She's not here. She's here. She, she's she's here, she, but she may be AFK. She, she's okay. There she is. No, she's I, on mute. Oh, there she is. Well, do you want to hear me blowing my nose? No. No. Um, no. what's the question? I don't know. That's I mean, you I want to hear your version of preterism. Yeah. How the church is for us, all the churches, the seven churches are still for today. Yeah, that's definitely not preterism. Because all those prophecies in there have all been fulfilled. If, if, if the stuff to those seven churches is about us today, then you still have to have the, you know, the land beast, the sea beast, the dragon being loose, you know, Satan being loosed and, you know, tormenting people and all this stuff. Like, you still have all that in the future. It means I have God, to devote you. Do you think, You're not purple. Do you think God is eternal? Do you think right. God is eternal? Yes, I think God is eternal. And is God the word? Is his word eternal? Yes, I think That's his all. word is eternal. His, his word is eternal that that's how no actually i'm seeing like the book of revelation uh <laughs> it's weird because i don't know why i didn't see that it was always done but like yeah the book of revelation is tied to all of the past like look at the chapter 22 this is i mean if that's where it's left off because that's where we are the new Jerusalem has come down. It it's above us. It's um, we we have access to the throne now because he right. fulfilled all things, and we can enter into the throne, and um, we we are co heirs with Christ right now here today. I, I don't disagree with anything Sandy has said. Did everything. No, nothing yet. So I agree with everything she said. So I think Albert was just not understanding. No, that. no, let her let her finish. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Sandy. I mean, I don't know. 
that, that was it. Oh, I think the preterist, this is where me and Albert disagree because he read the le very last verses in here, verse 21 and Revelation 22. He would, he which testifieth these things saith, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So verse 20. So surely I come quickly. Well, did he? Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. Yep. And even so, come Lord Jesus. That's forever. So he has come. He fulfilled all things. He, he sat down at the right hand of the father and, and he handed all of that to, to, to his body. Like if we are, if we are truly one with him, if he's the head and we're the body. Like Paul said, we, you know, seated, we're seated so together. With him. Disagree with me. Exactly there. So, so he did come quickly. Right. But it says, even so come Lord. So, even so come is forever like yeah he's always coming every time a new, oh, a so new uh, person comes into the enters into the kingdom by believing in jesus christ we have somebody new entering into the kingdom because the kingdom still goes on gotcha it doesn't require jesus to come and do anything he has nothing left to do but hebrews does say that if we're going to fear something that we haven't done, like if there's one thing, this one thing is left to do. Um, speaking of, I think he's speaking like in the sense of the 10 commandments, this one thing is to enter into his rest. That's what we should fear. According to Hebrews, not uh, that we, that of not entering into his rest. So, so what does that mean? What does Hebrews 4 mean? Is that where it is? Hebrews 4? Yeah, that's where it talks about not entering the rest. The end of chapter 3 and then going into chapter 4. The end of 3 and then a lot of 4 talks about it, I think. I mean, I don't think that means, oh, well, we should all just go sit on the couch and not do anything for our, the rest of the time on earth here. No, doesn't mean that. So what does it mean to you? Being faithful, that way you can actually enjoy what takes place in the afterlife, reigning with Christ over the world forever. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because like Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 19, if we have hope in Christ in this life only, then we are of all men to be most pitied. There's a lot more to Christianity than just, you know, this physical existence. There's going to be something better that waits for us after we leave this place. Yeah. And do, do, I mean, aren't we kind of practicing here? We're learning. I think we're taking our positions right here. I think we're, I think we're a seed inside that, that seed that Paul says, the thing that, you know, it has to die. It goes into the earth. And when it sprouts up, well, just like an apple has the seeds inside of it. So we have the flesh of the apple and the skin covering the apple. But if we're, if we're the flesh, we're building a seed, we're growing a seed inside of us as well. Like whatever, whatever you're doing here, words you're speaking, acts you're doing, all this, you know, good works. Um, not that that's leading us to our salvation, but it's feeding that seed inside of us. Well, it's, right? it's different rewards. Like Jesus talks about, you know, don't lay up treasure on earth, but lay up treasure in heaven. Like there's, you know, you're not saved by your good works, but you can lay up more treasure in heaven for yourself by doing good works. Rewards. Right. Yeah, rewards. It has nothing to do with right. your formation. It's about and, your work. It's about, that, it's about your rewards. And, it, and isn't there something that talks about our, our, our gown, like to not be stained, like the, the bride? blemishes in the uh, gown. Ephesians 5 talked about um, how Christ has cleansed us, I think, with his blood and how husbands need to wash their wives with the word and things like that. And it's talk, Paul's comparing the husband-wife relationship to that of like Christ in the church and how Christ has made the church spotless and without blemish and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I think that's somewhat like what Lori was talking about, the whole washing of 
each other's feet. Well, well I'm trying to figure out what I'm, I wasn't because, gone more than two. I wasn't gone more than two minutes. I haven't heard anything that <laughs> India said that would have made Albert fly off like that. Whenever I came back, Albert was going crazy. Like, what did I miss? <laughs> she was just talking. Remember, about... you read something in there that says, "You are clean." Didn't it, what it? Where were we reading, Lori? Are you talking about the washing of the, the word? word? Yeah, but Jesus, well, you're bathed. You said, "Well, then you're bathed, the and you was was bathed is clean." But yeah, he said to, you are clean. Then Jesus needs to continue washing our feet, and we need to wash each other's feet. Right. So I think that's a picture of, you know, we things are still going on. Like, well, I think you don't you just keep to, yourself clean. Yeah, and each you know, other. Like I know that like Matthew and Victoria were saying that that's it we're sanctified it's done it's finished but I see I think we are constantly being um cleansed in a sense yeah because we and go out we, every single day and if we continue to walk in sin we will walk right down a path that we're not that's, prepared for that's why Hebrews 3 and Hebrews 4 talk about I mean if you just go through the whole book of Hebrews and highlight the word every time the word like diligence pops up it pops up repeatedly because like he says, give all the more diligence, be diligent, you know, make, make sure, you know, stay steadfast, don't fall away. Like, obviously you need to keep living the right way because if you're, yes, if yeah. you don't, if you're not diligent to enter the rest then you're going to be just like those that perished in Came the, out of Egypt. The Torah, just like all those in Israel who were disobedient, they fell in the wilderness. Right, like the Hebrew writer is using those people as an example of don't be like them because they didn't enter yep. into the rest. Don't be like them. So then, so then, then that goes out the window in the sense of salvation that you can lose your salvation. You can lose. Well, when I say, yeah, I mean, if you want to use the word lose, I guess technically I don't prefer that word. I'd say walk away from, but it's not, it's not like it's something you can just like. Yeah, it's like John, John, does it John 10, 27, 28, Jesus says that, uh, you know, my father, he's given them to me and no one's able to snatch them out of his hand. But he says there, anyone who hears my voice and follows me, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lose them. No, no one, no one can snatch them out of my hand. But if you actually read what he says, he says those who hear and those who follow it's a present tense. It's an ongoing thing. As long as you continue to follow him, you cannot be lost. If you stop following him, say, I want well, I, to Yeah, but how, what do you do with the scripture about the... Will. What do you do with the scripture then about the uh, man who's sleeping with his father's wife? And right. he, said, he not, says, hand him over to Satan that's, that his soul may right. be saved in the end of his life. What's that? That's right. See, he wasn't. He, he wasn't following. He, he, was, he, refused, he wasn't hearing anymore. He wasn't following anymore. He was living life his right. way. He wasn't right. following the Lord anymore. But if you, you know, it says hand him over to Satan that he may, what is right. it? Right. Um, yeah, for the destruction of his flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I mean, he needed to be disfellowshipped. The church needed to rebuke him, you know, not not associate with him. Be like, hey, dude, you're not going to come here. We're not going to allow you to participate in the worship anymore. We're not going to let you. We're not going to treat you like a brother in Christ anymore until you repent of this sinful, wickedness lifestyle that you're living right here. Because this is not in keeping with what we do in following Jesus. They they needed to refuse fellowship with him until he repented and changed. That way, he would actually be saved. Because if he kept living the way he was living in sin, yeah, I mean, if you. Christ isn't going to save you if you say, yeah, I'm just going to keep living in rebellion against you. And I'm not going to do actually, you know, I'm not going to follow you because, you know, if you love me, you keep my commandments, Jesus says. And also John tells the Christians, you know, um, the same thing. So, yeah, but if you're not following us now, do you have to follow them perfectly? No. If, if, well, if you have to yeah, them but what is perfect? Sin is oh, sin is sin, Andrew. That's right. So that's right. I, 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 mm -hmm. I don't know. I would have I have a hard time believing that we're either righteous in okay. Christ but that, or that's we're not. The, that's the part where you enter that's the part where you enter into his rest. See? You have I think to so believe. Too. Trust. Like you have to 100% believe that his righteousness yes. is what makes you that's true. And like that's true. Like somebody that falls back into drunkenness you feel, and ends up on the streets is 
I, I just, I don't see how God would reject them. Well, what does Paul say to, the, to, to those who are saved? When Paul writes to the Christians in Rome, people who are, are already saved, he says to them, shall we continue in sin that God's grace may increase, may it never be, God forbid. I mean, I, I don't think if someone becomes a Christian and then, you know, today and then starting tomorrow for the rest of their lives, they say, no, nope, I hate God. I don't even believe in God anymore. I'm going to go out and live life however I want to and commit as many sins as I possibly can. I don't think God is going to save a person who says, I hate you and I don't want to be with you. I don't think God would force that person to be with him. Do you think that they actually ever had a relationship with God? Sure, Ju Judas did. Did he? he? He did, according to Jesus. I don't know. Sure. I mean, we, we, I mean, me I mean, I mean, Jesus, Jesus uh, chose them. Uh, he, he actually said they were, that they were all, that they, they were members of his household. Um, uh, uh, Peter says about Judas in Acts 1 that Judas turned aside to go to his own place, to go his own way. It was Judas' yeah. decision to leave. So if, if Judas, if Judas would have came back like Peter did, then, you know, he would have been forgiven, but he didn't want to come back like Peter, so. Uh, it's John, it's the 666 verse, Lori, John 6, verse 66. <laughs> Lord, to whom shall we go? And they but, turn and left him that day. It's like, oh, ooh. Well, you know what? I'd really, I'd really like to hear you and Matthew talk about this. I'd really, you know what I mean? I, because I, I, I well, have I'm, struggled I'm, with, I'm, I'm with that Matthew all my life. Because said. to me, it sounds like Lordship salvation, right? Which is what I lived under for 20 years and actually it, all it does is bring condemnation it actually makes you walk in more sin than than um oh it doesn't yeah, make me because walk guilt, in more sin. the guilt and condemnation is there but you oh, are absolutely. not condemned yeah my point is there's no one righteous we're all sinners and only jesus is perfect and so we all have to be saved in him and to be saved in him he expects you to live a certain way are you going to be perfect? No, that's why we need Jesus. That's kind of the whole point. But just because we need Jesus and just because he's the one who saves the, the Christians does not mean that, oh, well, Jesus saves me? Cool. I can go live however I want to. No, that's not no. that's not what I mean, right? Because God is the one that draws us, I believe. And um, yeah, see, I mean, I just, I just, I lived under that threat my whole life that I was in fear of always doing the wrong thing and go, then you're on your way to hell in a handbag. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's wrong. It doesn't I mean, produce any good fruit. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, I'm not saying that's the way to go about it. I mean, because, yeah, if, if, if it's about how many good but things. But that's what's preached really from most pulpits. Well, right? I, I, I don't preach that. I mean, I, I make clear whenever I preach that only Jesus is perfect and we need to be found in him. And be, by being found in him, he expects us to live a certain way. And part of that living a certain way that keeps us in Christ is confessing that we're sinners, confessing that we need him. That we can't do this on our own. Well, we're not okay, I agree with that. Without a doubt. So, I mean, that's first John one. I mean, if we walk in if we walk in the light, he's writing to Christians. I mean, John is writing to Christians and he says to them, if 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 we walk in the light, and part of that walking in the light, he goes on to say is confessing your sins, you know, then the blood of Jesus cleanses us. But if we say we have no sin then we, we're, we're making God a liar. His truth is not in us. He's writing to Christians. He's not writing to people who are on the fence. I mean, these people are Christians. They've probably been Christians for years that John's writing this letter to. And he says to them, mm -hmm. if you confess your sins, he's going to be faithful and just to forgive you. If you say, oh, I don't have any sin, then you're calling God a liar and his truth is not in you. Even though you're a Christian, then you're calling God a liar. I don't think God is going to save someone who's calling him a liar and the truth is not in you. I mean, that's kind of seems like the opposite. So the, the, so the eternal life thing has stipulations. If you, can, if, right. you can, uh, if you can pull the, uh, you know, if you can pull the cart for the rest of your life and not fall down. But what, what, is, what did Jesus say? And if you fall down at the wrong time and die, you're hooked. No, well, that's that's one way some people look at it. I don't think that's the right way that's to look at it. That's the old that. covenant. That's the yeah. old. You know what? Look, look, Lori, I don't think it's, you're, you're talking about, okay, just like he said, you you can't do enough good works to get right. saved. And it's not necessarily the works that you do that get you unsaved. Both is that has to do with belief, belief and unbelief, which 
can be that choice. Like when they chose, you can to be turn a believer and fall into sin, Sandy. Sure, you can be a right. believer and still but, love God, but fall into but deep all sin. Have, all have but, sin. But, but when we say fall into deep sin, it's not the falling into sin that makes you lost. It's your attitude. It's your heart. When you when you yeah. make the decision, I'm not going to confess my sins anymore. I'm not going to repent anymore. I'm not going to try to to make my life in a way that would be pleasing to God. When you reach that point, yeah, I'd say you're out of Christ. You're lost. But you can struggle every day with sin for the rest of your life and still be saved. It's not a right. problem. And, and, and we're not supposed to judge each other to that point. But when you see a, what what I think the scripture Andrew's talking about is when you see somebody who's who's already overcome and they're they're living, you know, outside of maybe alcohol or whatever, whatever their sins were, and they've overcame them, and then they go back into that, then then it says, you know, go to that brother one on one. Because he's erring. How do you know he's erring? Because he already overcame that. Now he's turning, you know, he's sliding back. So go to him, correct their way. Because we have to keep moving forward. There's a because verse, that's Andy, that. You, there's a verse, Andy, that what you just said. I mean, you almost quoted it verbatim what Peter says. Peter says, uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, he says, uh, for, verse 20, For if after they have escaped the defilements of the world, by the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and are overcome. The last state has become worse for them than the first, for it would have been better for them to not have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn away from the holy commandment handed on them. It has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to its own vomit. So mm -hmm. yep, that's basically exactly what and you just that, said. And that happens because there's been a drastic change in the heart, I think. Like, you know, if God is joy and, and all these, you know, good things, you keep walking in that way, but something comes that like makes you, you know, like you, ever, you hear about these people who believe in God their whole life and then, I don't know, their child dies. And then they, they just decide that's it. There's no God that, you know, this God can't be who he says he is. And they'll, they turn and then they'll, they'll go off and, their life becomes a horrible mess because they cannot accept, you know, the fact that their spouse or, you know, child or brother, or somebody close to them died or, or they see some horror, you know, there's horrors in this world. doesn't mean God's not true. Do you remember but, what Jesus you know, said to, do you remember what Jesus said to Peter when, or when Peter said, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother up to seven times? Yeah. Yeah, Jesus said, I don't, I don't say seven times. He said, I say 70 times seven, meaning as, as often as your brother comes to you repenting, you forgive him. Well, as many times as we come to God repenting and confessing that we've done wrong and we want his forgiveness, he will forgive. It's when you reach the point, you don't want God's forgiveness anymore. You don't care anymore. You're just leaving, yeah. Yeah. turning away. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. We're not talking about, oh, you struggle and make mistakes. That's not what we're talking about. I don't know. I mean, some people want to. Have to I'm going to have to look into it just a little in, more. Um, <clears throat> chapter uh, 11 of Roman. Look, you guys, I got to say good night. I, but, uh, I will see you Friday. Away. See you, Lori. Okay, good night. Good yeah, I got to. I got to work. Lori. Early. I got a big day. What? Go, go, read, go read chapter 11 of Roman. Not tonight. I'm tired. Good night, girl. Good night. No, not tonight. Write it in your copy <laughs> <laughs> later yeah it is getting late oh it must be really late for you guys it's, well, no. it's really late for albert not me yeah <laughs> albert i'm going to fire this time zone well, but hey dave, <clears throat> dave bob or whatever his name is is probably the latest but i'm the commander but anyway no yeah i don't even know dave bob australia had massive flooding i don't even know if dave bob is okay we have to like, we, had jump we had massive flooding I, I haven't had internet for the last five days jesus like we, really? we, we we've had we've had tons of roads closed around here. Like there were tornadoes, and everything around here. I know this is, the south has been actually pretty dangerous. I, the tornadoes mm -hmm. were near you though. Like oh like, yeah, like they barely missed they barely missed me. They were only a couple miles away. Jeez, thank the Lord. <laughs> it's close. Ooh. I mean we I mean there was lightning strikes all around though. Lightning hit something because we lost internet for five days. That sucks. <laughs> Like wow. that's, like, we just, I mean, I just, I just got internet back today. I've had to, I, I've had to go to different people's houses and stuff to, you know, bum off their internet to do my school stuff all week. I was gonna say that, <laughs> that like being it's out nuts. of water. 
No internet? Like, you, 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 don't no real, toilet, you don't realize, no water. You don't realize how much you depend on the internet until you don't have it for five days. <laughs> it's like, it's like, no, it's like these days, it's like, oh, so back in the ancient days, it was like, what are your most, you, the necessities you need? It's uh, food and water. But today, now the necessities are internet, then water, then food. <laughs> See, I think, uh, Sandy, what Lori, well, Romans 11 would definitely help too, but I was thinking, she really needs to read Galatians chapter, uh, is it three or five? Galatians five. Paul is writing to Christians, and he says to them in chapter 5, verse uh, 4, you have been severed from Christ. You who are seeking to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace because they're leaving Christ and they're going back to Judaism. Right, you that they are. Yourself. Well, you can't That's be severed. Right. And a lot of it. You cannot be severed from something you were never attached to. You cannot fall if Correct. you never stood. You can't be chopped off of a grafted tree if uh, you that's were right. never grafted in. That's, that's in the right. First I don't place. care what Matthew says. You can't be severed from something you were never attached to. You can't fall if you're never standing. Yeah, and that's what that's that what great. Romans eleven is about the the natural branches. But it's a beautiful picture of yeah. Well, you know, yeah, because in Romans eleven he says that yeah, God cut them off, but them. he can graft them in again. He can bring them in again if they come back to him. Mm hmm. He, yeah. They were cut off. They were blinded for a reason, you know. And and yep. all the, the picture is, is that God yep. doing a bigger See? thing than we can even imagine. But th but they don't they don't read all of it. If they if they keep reading past that part, it says in verse twenty two, "Behold, then the kindness and severity of God to those who fell, severity, but to you, God's kindness, if if." People need to highlight that word or circle it or underline it, do something with it because everybody just reads over it and they act like it doesn't exist. If you continue in his kindness, otherwise you also will be cut off. And they also, <laughs> yeah, there's your if, there's another if that no one ever pays attention to. If they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. Look, no one pays attention to these. Oh, things. see, you like, you graft them in again. See, yeah. after the fact, like That's you were right. grafted in, they now you're cut out, but they now you're people. grafted back in because you double repented. Yeah, you were, yeah, you were his people. Now you're not his people. Guess what? You can still be his people again if, right? Because it, yes. it's not the blindness. Right. It's not the blindness that makes you lost or whatever. It's it's when you don't hear his word. It's like huh. he's able to graft you in again. Sure. It's when you make that determination, you're just okay. like, no, nope, it's, it's not a slip up. It's not like, oh man, I messed up today. No, it's it's you're changing your entire life course. <laughs> it's not like, oh man, I made a boo boo, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's not what we're talking about, right? It's like, okay, I'm walking, I'm leaving Christianity. I'm done with Jesus. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's, it's that severe. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, but I, I feel you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. Yeah, but I mean, what is what is really behind this spirit that Lori feels, and I think I, because I she's, felt, uh, I think she's, Matthew yeah, feels, yeah. It's, people, people it's, get people looking around. Told, yeah, it's not people. People have been told incorrectly. I think that oh yeah, do so many good things or whatever, and it's like no, that's you're missing the point. That's not it. You can't do enough good things. Well, and just looking around at the world, and it's so you know feel filling our hearts with fear and it's like well you know you got to keep your eyes on jesus and not let all of this fear and everything um overtake us you know there's always the battle between the reality of this world and the faith we have in a better world you know so what are you going to do i mean the disciple the, the apostles like John was beheaded. <laughs> I mean, if Peter was crucified, supposedly that's, you know, a, an extremely painful way to die. But um, I don't think they cursed God in the end. You know, like God never said we're not going to go through struggles. But it's depressing. And so I can't hardly listen to much news anymore. I'm only going to listen to good news. <laughs> I 
I think chapter eight or Romans, probably the whole book of Romans. There's somewhere right in there. It's just, it's just a good uplifting word, like how to live and how, how we need to just walk out our life with Christ. If it was easy, maybe we wouldn't have all these books in here to learn. Well, it's, it's not easy. I mean, the guy who wanted to follow Jesus, he said, you know, Lord, I'll follow you anywhere or whatever. And Jesus says in Matthew 8, I think verse 20, in response to that guy's statement about, Lord, I'll follow you wherever you go. Jesus says, foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Meaning, you want to follow me, you better count the cost. You better understand it's not going to be an easy road ahead of you. It's going to be difficult. However, Jesus also says in Matthew 11, take my yoke upon you which is interesting because if you know what that means, it's you're putting something on you that has weight, but he says, mine is easy. Mine is light, meaning, yeah, it's going to be difficult, but it's bearable. You, if you follow me, it's not, yeah, it's not going to be easy, but it's bearable. If you try to do this thing on your own, you can't do it. Can't do it. So you better come and put my yoke on you. Yeah, it's going to be tough. And yeah, you, you got to live a certain way, but it's better than the alternative because the alternative is you try to do as many good things as you can do and you're still lost. You can't do anything because no one's going to be saved by themselves. Oh, here you go. Albert, you like the Old Testament. Numbers 14, verse 11 and 12. Oh, that's that's right around near my story of number yeah. six. Okay. Yeah. Again, these are God's people at this time. And notice the language God says to them. The Lord says to Moses, how long will this people spurn me? How long will they not believe in me? Despite all the signs which I have performed in their midst, I will smite them with pestilence and dispossess them. I will yeah. make into a nation. How can you dispossess something unless you possess something? You can't. I mean, you have to own it. Like I could be like, yeah, hey, I own you. Those people. But uh I don't own you anymore because yeah, exactly. Yeah, this, this, man, that whole once I'd always say stuff is just pure garbage. If Matthew wants to debate that, I'm ready anywhere, anytime. So there you go. Boom. It's recorded. Hopefully he's listening. <laughs> <laughs> That's his view or not. I'm friendly debate always. Always have a friendly debate. It's always cheerio. No, we could set it up though if you really want to. Like we could we could do it. Like we could get it popping. Oh, maybe Zach or well, I don't even know about Zach. I think he I mean, well no, that wouldn't work. Zach's Zach, Zach's you a tool guy. Teammate if you want. You could uh you know I think I think Zach, I think Matthew and Zach might be teammates on this on that. Uh, who would you pick to be the moderator? Uh shoot, I don't know. I guess I guess you could if you wanted to. I don't I don't I don't know anybody else on you here besides Joe. The person you think would be the most fair moderator most would have fair? zero bias at all. Dan. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good pick. Dan cares nothing about anything we talk about, so I can't that's think true. of a fairer person. <laughs> that's he, true. He would be the most fair moderator. That's true. <laughs> yeah, he'd be rude. He'd be rude to all y'all. He would be rude to everyone. <laughs> He'll tell you. Indeed. He'll tell you what he thinks. Eh. No, he's not allowed to because he's the moderator. He has to just that, moderate. That's a good, that's a good answer. He can't give his opinion he on anything. Dan do it. He, he just has to moderate. Dan, Dan is a fallen. He is a slidden Christian, in my opinion. I don't know if he, I mean, <laughs> he's heard the word. He kind of grew up in the word, didn't he? Let's and just yet, say he, he, wants can, to he just can name every single, he can out name there every doing his, in the you Bible. Know he can name them all in in succession rapidly in like a song. Yeah. I can't even do that. He's got a good grasp of the Bible. He reminds me of the prodigal son. Like, oh, what'd you do? You just went. Oh, you know what? Just give me my inheritance right now. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna live it up, party it up, do what I want. You know. But he's gonna come back. He's gonna come back. And then we can throw a party. But you know, we right. got maybe we got to help him out a little bit. Like, don't be feeding him too well when he comes over. Give him the slop from the pig trough until he comes home. <laughs> Just kidding. Just I don't story. think it says that, but yeah, I feel you. <laughs> God, we're being recorded. 
Dan won't listen to this. Will of course, he? it's recording. See, but you know, like yeah, I said, I love, I love your soul. <laughs> I was, uh, I was watching. Come home, Dan. I was doing the whole research into the angel, Satan, demon, all that jazz, right? And I was looking for other videos because you said, "What else do you believe?" In the your comment, right? When I linked you the uh, the angel of the Lord video, so I was looking for more, and the other one I found was from a year ago, and I was like, "Wow." Like, here's one. I'll link this one. But then as I was listening to it, I was like, Shh. I was like, oh, no, like Sandy's in this one. She's already in it. Like, <laughs> this is when she first joined. <laughs> it's like one of the first oh, oh. one of the first videos that we ever did. It's recorded. And it's there. And it's about it's it's like Satan, angels, demons, like all, all the key phrases, all those oh words. My God. I was probably <laughs> tearing you a new one. Uh, so it's there. You should listen to it because I was listening to about two hours. Oh, of I don't want to listen to myself. Like, oh my goodness! And Alan was there. Yeah, Alan was there. Alan was there. Does Andrew know how we met? That I was like, oh man, these guys who don't believe in Satan. Yeah, I'm not what sure. I don't know if I know. Do you know the story, there, guy? Do you I know? Don't think so. I don't think so. I'll let her tell the story. It's probably better from her side <laughs> i just i just remember i was leaving a, a message for these youtubers saying how satan doesn't exist and i was like oh. so the very satan who's going to destroy their souls in hell they don't even believe in so i had to had to leave a message to try to help save them and then albert came along <laughs> but this crazy there's no saint message. I was like, oh no, now I have to save Albert too. <laughs> Not that I save anybody, you understand. <laughs> when, when Albert's like, oh, this sounds like a nice girl. Oh, I better, I better explain to her the truth. And I was like, oh, this, this poor guy, he's, he's a lost one. I better explain to him the truth. <laughs> and now here I am going, yeah, I got a totally different idea. Yeah. <laughs> because exactly. really you were giving the nice version really what it was i was just like you don't even know what you're going on about and you were like what <laughs> it's like what do you mean i, I know don't know so mean to me no the I first the first, was sentence, super mean. <laughs> the first sentence was the shortest sentence anybody's ever wrote me the first word he said wrong period <laughs> <laughs> that's so mean right Oh, I'm sorry. But, but, yeah, I did, I did you were polite. You were polite. You didn't. You I was didn't very call me. You didn't degrade. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's like, look, some people come on and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wow. take off. I, I'm gonna take off. I, I, I gotta go play some Shadowlands before. Uh, oh. 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 Are you trying to make fun of me because of the World of Warcraft? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't really know anything about it. I, I just googled World of Warcraft and just started clicking on stuff and trying to find like a word that I could throw out there that would uh, pique Albert's attention. Oh, so you want to get my attention because you know, we don't play Shadowlands. Yeah, I don't even, know, I I don't even that, know what that is. So. I hate that game. That that game is trash. Do you like the classic version better? Correct. There you go. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I don't know anything about this stuff. I'm just scrolling through looking at some of it. So why were you trying to get my attention? You have it. What about Legion? <laughs> Why are you talking about World of Warcraft? Legion was okay, but mm, no. It's like a green cover. It's okay. Yeah. It was an okay expansion, but it wasn't like, oh my gosh, like I love Legion. No, no, not like. Man, did you know about this stuff? Why are we talking about World of Warcraft? I don't know if anybody else on here like did that stuff besides you. No, it's just me. I never knew anything. No, about I have it. the Discord. That's you know, I know about all these things because I have a Discord. Well, we were supposed to have an updated Discord like six months ago, but Albert's friend fell okay, through. Okay, well, all right. I'll ask Camden. I'll ask him if he's made any progress. You have a lighter in here, I I didn't want to be. Uh... No, but seriously, or do you have like people lined up that you want to invite? Because we could do that. You want I'll to invite you have people lined up that you want to invite to the public it. server because we're going to need moderators. So you yourself, you'd have to be like the police in addition. Uh, to let's see. 
You just don't want to set it out here on the steps. And well, it'll be a lot easier after I graduate in like seven weeks. <sighs> seven weeks. That's not that far away. But... Can't come soon enough. Let me tell you. Well, I hope you graduate with flying colors. Well, I uh, may not get summa cum laude, but hopefully at least magna would be good. But we can we can definitely arrange for if you want to have debates or whatever or talk about a topic like the group by the way is always at your mercy if you, that's the problem the group never has anything that they want to talk about so we wind up talking about dumb shit all the time well it was pretty good tonight I mean I came on here around around ten I, I had a purpose I had a purpose whoever doesn't thing. come on that's what we talk about I came on <laughs> no I'm sorry I mean I mean I came on I came on it I came on like two hours ago and y'all as soon as I jumped on y'all were already like arguing about we you were into it because my whole type topic for the night was numbers 16 and Jude. That was it. That was the topic for the night. I, that was all we're talking about like for four hours ever since like six o'clock. Damn right. I, I had a purpose and a thing and y'all y'all went along with it. So if you have a purpose and a thing, we can go along with it. Like it's fine. We can wait wait the whole night. We can do four hours, six hours, whatever. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um I would be more than happy to debate either the deity of Christ. With Dave. Is it? it doesn't have to be a debate, but it'll or be or once I've always had with Matthew or whoever. A discussion. Um, How about a discussion I, rather than a debate? Because like debate is like a structured thing. A yeah, discussion, but, we could just talk and we'll be like, if if somebody gets too uppity, we all get to flag you because we're all just sideliners. <laughs> uh, you, you can be my moderator. You, I mean, I thought you, you could be my, my, my moderator and uh Zach could be uh Matthew's moderator. <laughs> there you go. Right. Well, Lori already is my Lori is already my moderator. Sammy and Lori's like our She's audience. Better at it. She's getting bolder. She's like, Danny, Sandy, Sandy, Sandy. What about that Alan guy? I've never seen him on here. Well, they've been apparently well, trying to like get Alan. We tried to but. we tried to get him to come back on. He's there on the Discord seemingly, but he's not replying. So, I don't know. The sentiment method. The only people I've ever seen on here, besides the regular group, was Stacy like twice. And there was one other guy, but he never said anything. The name started with the J, maybe? Hmm. Who was that? There was another guy that came on here before. Um, Joel Sexton came on a couple uh, of times. Yeah, no, he was, oh, he was on here. I, I told him to get on here. Um, it was... Uh, you know, I invited Joel in the who, first place, but who, yeah. Who, uh, who, who, who was that guy? I have to go look at this list now of people over here on the right side. Um, it wasn't J.R. Brayshaw. <laughs> no, it wasn't him. It was uh, uh, Troy. Oh Troy! Oh yeah, our our resident. Uh, he's our resident. Um, I've I've seen him on here a few times with everybody, but he's never. Said he's anything. our he's he's our resident Israel only. Like he's the only one that who's Israel only that we've allowed to come in here. Never Even seen though, never seen Willie T or Tom M or any of these guys. No, well, well, look, okay, so Tom M, yeah, you're right, but Willie T has his own YouTube channel. You can see him. The reason you don't see him coming is because he's on a different time schedule. Like his times are all screwed. So like if we were gonna actually have a hangout with him, we'd have to do it at like four or five in the afternoon. <laughs> like because he's already going to sleep. It's he's on he's in like Ireland or Scotland or something. I have, I have played a few chess games with John Law. Yeah, John Lawson. He's good. He was used to come to our you know, like all these people. These are all good dudes, but did you say Ken Ami has talk to Billy T? You have to talk to him during his hours. He's literally in like Scotland or something. Ken Ami. Ken Ami. Ken Ami. Ken Ami is an author. Yes, I invited him. He's an author. Uh, he has many books. I disagree with some things that he says. He's not a full preterist. So you can tell by the colors on the Discord. Uh, um, he's not purple. He's. I'm pretty sure he's a futurist of some sort, but I don't want to label him. He's got uh, something called Cole Kant, the Living Fossil, on his YouTube website. Coelacanth. 
That's a fish. Yeah. Yeah. Part one, two, three. Okay, interesting. I don't know about that one, but yeah, a coelacanth is a fish that the science mainstream meat science would say uh, was extinctified like a bajillion years ago. But and then he's they found some, like he's got some atheist like debate things on here. Yes, he he he's definitely a believer. It's just uh, he's like <clears throat> I would say he's got a big book series on like why why nephilims are real, but. He will at least be somewhat on my side where he'll say, like, yeah, okay, Nephilims are real, which I don't believe, but he'll say, oh, only for this part of the time. Like, they were only true uh, here, but the, after the flood, they're no longer, like, so he, he's got lines that are drawn and all such things. Wait, but wait, did you say he takes, the view that, he takes the view that, like, the sons of God, Genesis 6, they were, like, high, like hybrid, half and, and, and yes, like, he takes you know, that, but he takes that they were all wiped out in the flood. As yeah, well. that's what I've been wondering about. I could get, I could get, I could get on board with that. Maybe I've been wondering about that recently. Hit him up, hey man. He's an author. He's got books. Uh, you know, uh, if you want to, if you want to read any of his books, I can I send you some of them. I have I, like a book. I don't, of them. I don't know about his whole video thing right here called a uh, new book, Hollywood Aliens and UFOs, first showing the days the Earth stood still. <laughs> I don't know what about his new books are going, but he's got all sorts of books. Like, here, let me read read some of the titles that he has. That I these are the books that he has oh, written. That I God. actually, he's I here no here here here's here's all the ones that I already own of his. Okay, are you ready for this? So he's got Cain as the serpent, seed of Satan, five volumes, right? So that's uh, something uh, Lori might like. And then we have uh, Nephilim. This one's huge. I helped him write this. I bought the books for him uh, so he could write this book. Uh, it's Even though it's two giant volumes, but it's Nephilim and Giants as per Pop Researchers, volume one and two. Those are huge. They, the two of them together could knock you out. They're so big. And then he's got uh, On the Genesis 6 Affair, Sons of God, Angels or Not. I have that book. He's got the apocryphal Jesus. I got that book. He's got the paranormal and early Jewish and Christian commentaries by Kenemy. That's that's a huge book, just as big as the other two that I said. Then I have in consideration of the books of Enoch. I know, I I know, I know you got his books on the devil. No, the Trinity text. It's almost done. Trinity text. It says, what does the Bible say about the demons? And it's, what does the Bible say about giants and Nephilim? What does the Bible say about Satan, the devil? What does the Bible say about angels? And the last one is Fifty Shades of Grey Aliens. So, <laughs> so, so there you go. Does Sandy or anybody else on here have his books beside you? Those are, those are, I have a whole bunch of his books. No, I don't think anybody else has his books aside from me. He's got a two and a half hour video on YouTube, on his YouTube channel. On Genesis six, Nephilim giants, Rephaim. Yes, yes, and he would say, he would say that all the Nephilims and all those were all wiped out in the flood. God accomplished the job. So all the ones after the fact, after the flood, are actually lies and fables. Yeah, whenever I graduate, like seven more weeks, I'll have to start, you know, checking out his videos and stuff, you know. Um, He's yeah, he's got, he's got a lot of things. He's got lots of videos, tons of stuff. On lots there. of videos, and he's got lots of books. I don't know how <laughs> in the world you can make five volumes on uh, Cain as a serpent seed. How do you make five volumes out of that? Do you want me to tell you how he does it? Here, I'll tell you exactly. I could tell that. you five. I could do that. You already know what the five are. Here we go. No, I can. I, I, I can. Make, I can make a book of. I don't the, know five this, volumes. You can make this five books one. about that. This is the one that I just, this is the series that I bought off of him most recently. You can even ask him, like, this is the one I just bought off of him most recently. But the first one, oh, sorry, I'm going backwards now. <laughs> All right. All right. Two, three, four. Hey, where is it? There it is. One. All right. All right. So Cain as Serpent Seed, volume one. It's considering some issues with which encircle the theory. That's the first book. It's not very big. It's about, it's about 50 something pages. Not very big, okay. 
volume two. This one's much bigger. This is Cain as a serpent seed, volume two, considering Zen Garcia's claims. Let's see, so that one's that one's a little bit more sizable. That one's like how many, how many pages? That's like 167 plus pages. Hmm. So, and then here we go. Cain as a serpent seed of Satan, volume three, which is even bigger. Even actually, the two of those combined are about the same size as this one. This one's huge. <laughs> but this is considering the claims of various promulgators of this theory. Cain is the serpent seed of Satan. Woo, that one's huge. And that one is, uh, all right, we're at 257 pages, easy. So <laughs> that one's huge. And then we have part four, which is uh, considering the claims of white supremacist promulgators of this view. That one's a little bit shorter, only about 89, 90 or so pages. It's part four of the serpent seed. And then the fifth part, the final part, is considering the theory and the personages, person, personages who promulgate it. And that's another you know, 50 pages or so. So, <laughs> um, so have, Albert, have you heard of Michael Aquino? Um, maybe. I don't know. He's got a video he did three years ago called Michael Aquino on UFOs and aliens. a lot of stuff on aliens i guess not then but no all they have i have one from ken which is the 50 shades of gray aliens which is a pretty good book actually because you know it it's true everybody always remembers you know it's 50 shades of the same thing that you saw on tv it always amazes me how people can like come up with so <laughs> many like either books or videos or both crazy I mean, I've never even written one. All you really have to do is just have thoughts and write them on pages. And oh, like, tons you of have thoughts. a book. So put them in a book and just like call it a day. You can publish it for free on Amazon, just like Ken does. Or I have a question <laughs> for the Predators. Sure. Do it. What's the question? I guess the question is for all three of us. Hmm? The book. <laughs> Uh, the book of Revelation, these letters that um, were written to the seven churches. Do you think they were literal letters that John had like sent to these different churches? Yes. Yeah, I would concur as well. They were actual letters. I, okay, I would too. So here's what's interesting. There were actual physical letters and and each one it says it says unto the angel of the church of ephesus right oh you notice that that's cute blah 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 now all these are addressed to an angel of the church which is what the apostle i mean what what is the head the, not, the high the priest pastor. No. It's the pastor oh. it's the leader it's the pastor the possibly. apostle what, what is the apostle the highest level? Like you have disciples, apostles. What's the other word? Wait, say it again. There's apostles, and there, well, there's disciples. There's something else. Apostles and well, like you got a, you have a and you have different roles, and you had some who are apostles, some were elders, some are deacons, some are evangelists. People who are elders could also be referred okay. to as pastors or shepherds or bishops. Um, but that, that would all fall into the category. What would be the highest ranking? Apostles. At so this Jesus, time. Like Peter, Paul, James. Oh, no. That's what I thought. To the, okay. To the, so pastor, I would say that these... to the pastor of the church of over here. Because this is from an apostle. Yeah. Paul, to the church of. Yeah. And he's writing to, to the, the head, of this uh, head guy. or the he leader. Doesn't... To me, it doesn't make any yeah, sense to the head of all the them to be like, hey, let me write a physical letter to an angel who's a supernatural being. Like, here you go, angel. Like, where are you? I can't see you. 
wait, where are you? No, or you can write it to the, the to the actual guy who's the actual leader of the physical church, and you're like, hey, guy, pay attention. Your church is slipping up. Like, yo, here's the letter. We just got it from Paul. Get going, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Well, and maybe maybe the leaders change, and maybe doesn't. I mean, maybe this is more like a title. But then look at look at this look at this verse. Where to go? Okay, so verse nine, chapter two. He's writing to what church is this? Ephesus to the angel of the church in Smyrna. Oh, that's the next one. That's the second one. Ephesus just ended. Okay. Which was dead and is alive. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. That's the Jews. Okay. And then you skip down here, verse 13. Now, this is uh, the angel of the church at Pergamos. Pergamos. I know thy works and where thou dwellest even where saint and sea is and thou holdest fast my name and has not denied my faith even in those days where an antipas was my faithful martyr who who was slain among you where satan dwelt so here's my question uh antipas d- who's this Come on, he was a martyr where was he yeah. martyred don't know but it says where satan is um Makes me think it of where the seat of Satan was. It was to the church of where? That's how you know where it was. Doesn't tell you. It makes me think of Jerusalem, though. Just makes me think of it's it. Not. Yeah, doesn't it? Oh, I'm like, well, hey, well, it could be like that. Like, because it'd be like a Matthew angle, right? Like, it's like, well, it seems like it's talking about Esau. But oh, yeah. Actually, it didn't have to be. Well, in right. Jerusalem, they had the temple, right? And then synagogues were what? The churches that went out or the, you know, would be in different lands like if yeah, you couldn't get to the temple every day you could go to a synagogue yeah, right I mean, yeah i mean you might only go to the temple like three times a year if you're like a jewish male you'd have to go there three times a year for passover pentecost and whatever the other one was um booths maybe um but uh yeah i mean so like every, I'm just saying, but every week you would have you know your sabbath you'd go to your synagogues and stuff this is just another, I have to rewrite the, the Bible in my mind. So when I read things like even where Satan's seat is, now I have to look at that differently and go, well, Satan's seat, uh, the seat, like Moses' seat, you know, this would be in a synagogue. Look, at, like, well, look at chapter three. Look at chapter three, verse nine. This is the church at Philadelphia. I'll make them of the synagogue of Satan, which they do or not, but do lie. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Hmm. Yep. That's what happened. Jesus said to, okay, you people who are claiming to be Jews, but you're really not, you're lying, because Paul says, the Jew is not one who's a Jew outwardly, circumcision of the flesh means nothing. Jew is one who's inwardly, circumcision of the heart, of the spirit. So, the Jews definitely realize that they're not God's people and that the Christians they've been slaughtering the last 40 years, that's really the people Jesus loves. And he proved that whenever he slaughtered them all using the Romans. Maybe 70, that's for dang sure. But yeah, all the people think this is talking about Rome. It's like, that makes absolutely no sense. The, the Romans were not claiming to be Jews. That's not what John, I mean, when John says there are people who claim to be Jews and they're really not, they're lying. He's not talking about Rome. No, he's talking about the actual Jewish people who are fakers. Yep. Yeah. And he talks about them more than once in these letters to the churches. Satan has brought up. Why? Because they're the enemy. Who is the enemy of Christ? Well, whoa. Whoa. Yeah. And, and yeah, right. I mean, he, he told yeah, them the who they were. The place is called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. But now the enemies that decide, he says, I will make 
I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. So they, they're called out. See, I was doing a study on the church. The word church, ecclesia, or however you say it, means called out. Right? And I've heard that maybe even in the Bible. You know, you're called out ones. Yeah, so I mean, where are they being called out from? They were called out from Egypt, right? From bondage. And then into another well, place, the wilderness. Yeah. Then they were called out from the wilderness into another place, you know, the promised land. Well, these people, they're sitting in these synagogues. And when Christ came, right, he does away with the old covenant. He's bringing in a new thing, but they reject him. And they won't, they won't come out from the synagogue, right? They won't come out into the new covenant. See? Well, if they didn't want to come out, they got slaughtered. So there you go. Yeah. Hebrews and they 13. literally wouldn't come out. Of, yeah. They wouldn't even come out of Jerusalem. Like hey, he read, uh, read Hebrews 13 verse, uh, Hebrews 13, 13, Hebrews 13, 13 and 14. Hebrews 13, 13? Yeah, and 14. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Amen. That's a good one. Let, let us go out. Let us go outside the camp. Yep. We're going to go out. Bye. We're not going to stay yep. here yeah right we get too comfortable where we're sitting anyway dang it Albert. Yeah. Oh, i meant to leave like 30 minutes ago albert kept me on here what how do you what do you mean you have to leave like 30 minutes i was ago. leaving like 12 30 and then albert talked about kin of me mm, sorry and look at the sac and the sacrifices we give now you know Sacrifice, sacrifice of praise accepted. <laughs> that is the fruit, our lips giving Ro thanks Ro to his name. Uh, Romans 12. Good, I think. Sandy. I think that's right. Romans 12, Oh. <clears throat> that means you're supposed to go there and read the I verse. Think, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good with any time Sandy brings up a word or a phrase or something. I know exactly where it is that she's talking about. <laughs> no, I mean, I know I'm saying she should do that because you brought up the verse. She should look it up. <laughs> yeah, Sandy. What does Romans 12 1 say? I did look it up. I got my, my little, Al I mean, Andrew index. <laughs> Your little copy book. <laughs> okay. uh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. See? Nice. Yeah, yeah that's, that's really that, all I think we're supposed to do. That's what you were saying. Is pick up your mat, pick up your bed. Do you know it was a Sabbath day, right? Jesus told that, uh, I don't know, whatever he was, he couldn't walk. Um, lame, I guess. Mark Pick two. up your bed and walk. Mark two, Sandy. Like, we are supposed to be resting, but not literally laying in Mark bed, two, nine. resting as we walk. Mark two, nine, Sandy. Mark two, nine. Yeah, that's what you're talking about. Oh, you're saying I'm always like talking scriptures, but I don't even know. <laughs> well, read it and see. I might I might have a lot of the Bible memorized. I just don't know where. <laughs> hey, don't worry, Mark don't me, me and oh, him don't I have mean, it memorized either. We only know like certain verses. Like I know Genesis mm -hmm. six because like it's been beat to death like a a dead horse <laughs> yeah. that's the only reason i know 
And I just know most of the New Testament. Mark 2 9, whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk. That's what you were talking about. There's another one. That's not the one I was thinking of, but that, that's another one. Verse 11. But that you may know that the Son of Man has to forgive sins. Huh? Verse 11. You said pick up your pallet, go home. Yep. There's another one. It was, the, it was a. It was the lame man, and he told him, pick up your bed and walk, and then they, they came to Jesus because he, you know, they asked him, who told you to pick up your bed? And, you know, they're all worried about picking up his bed. Like, here's a man who hadn't walked for 30-some years, and all they can say instead of, like, how is it that you're walking? They're like, who told you to pick up your bed and walk? <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that's Jesus. That's I, I think that's Acts 5 or Acts 3. Is it X3? The X3, maybe? At the gate, the, the healing of the lame man at the gate, beautiful. Yeah. He leaped up, oh. stood up, started walking, went to the temple. All the people saw him walking around, praising God. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> like sometimes that's how I am. It's like, you know, you're just kind of like, whatever, and you come in the house and, you know, you're like, grump, 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 it's the kids and like, you don't even notice all the good <laughs> it's like oh, <laughs> oh that's how they so... are like, the dude's walking the dude's walking and they're like who told you to pick up your bed box? so what you're saying this is, is, this some, is a message about wait are you saying sometimes you get distracted <laughs> yeah i say we're, we're too focused on whatever we think the problem is okay Luke that 10. we don't even see any of the Luke 10, Sandy. story Luke 10, 38 through 42 since you talked about being distracted <laughs> now it came to pass as they went that they entered into a certain village and a certain woman named martha received him into her house and she said had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Yeah, this is totally me. Bid her, therefore, that she help me. <laughs> and Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Mary chose to sit down and listen to what Jesus had to say, and Jesus wasn't going to take that away from her. Martha needed to quit being yep. so busy and distracted all the time. Exactly. Well, and Harry, like, oh, you know what? Forget it. This is going to wait till tomorrow. But they've waited for actually quite a few years now. So there's scripture about when when to actually go about doing the work or just get to hire somebody no mm. yeah most of these if you think about the sabbath day the day that we're told to fear, fear the one thing left what does that mean all i can think is it means is out of the commandments right this one thing to rest Kind of like this, I guess. To stop worrying. You know, the world is so filled with wanting us to worry about everything right now. It's stupid. Worry about gas prices. Oh, you know, the food shortages are coming. And, you know, all this nonsense we've heard for the last year. Um, I don't know intercessory where you know moses fell on his face like he interceded for the people when god was gonna intervene you know um judge it's like Sandy, are, you, are, you, are you talking about not worrying um it's more than just not worrying it's it's like stepping in not just not just not worrying 
but you know stepping out and and just having a it's like this come up here you know when he when he yells uh, i think that's in revelation too he says come up here i think that's uh that's what we need to do as far as christians when we're walking through looking at viruses and you know all the negativity on the news and about our ridiculous president blah 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 is we have to come up higher we have to come up and look at things from god's view rather than just always seeing everything from man's view and the way man's always telling us to look at everything okay yep. Sandy, here. Oh, here's it. Here's I'll, it. I'll leave you with, i'll leave you with this verse before i go because i should have already left philippians 4 6 and 7 all right look it up and then i can go and then the yep. night shall belong to you and albert it means you have to look it up quick and yeah, that means quick. you have until i get down to push the stop record button <laughs> I can't find Philippians. I give, no, I give you a hand. hand. It's in the New Testament. It was written by Paul. Oh. That doesn't help. Philippians. Philippians is after Ephesians. It's before Colossians. Oh, shoot. Only a true master would know that knowledge. <laughs> See, I told you I'm directly challenged. I was going in the opposite way. You're Ephesians. Really what am I looking at? It's after Ephesians. Four? Yeah, Philippians 4. No, Ephesians has six chapters. Philippians has four. Go to, go to Philippians chapter four, last chapter. Four, okay. Verse six and seven. Be careful for nothing, but in everything. Yeah, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So Amen. You, 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 you may go. <laughs> all right albert y'all have a good one hopefully i'll see y'all friday maybe i'm sure matthew and everybody will be on see what everybody's going on i'm sure i'll come on here and y'all be arguing about something sounds good have a good one good night